Well, a very good morning in the morning. It's just uh, five minutes to 12 here, local time in uh, Menorca in Mahon. And we're into day number three of the Menorca 52 Super Series uh, sailing week. The uh, ultimate, the penultimate, sorry, the ultimate regatta of the season is the showdown, which will decide the destination of the 52 Super Series 27 title. And it's a three-way battle between Platoon, between Quantum Racing and Azura, still standing at the top of the table. We've had two uh, fairly difficult and challenging days of uh, racing so far. Just one race a day on each of the first two days. Uh, the breeze has been uh, coming down from the north, very shifty, very big, left overseas, very bouncy and very difficult for the teams and very in particularly pretty hard for the uh, afterguards to uh, really read the breeze. And so far, it's uh, today then uh, things look a little bit better. The sun's out. We're looking at breeze uh, from the uh, south, southeast today, uh, more uh, normal w wind conditions. The seas are flatter and hopefully uh, things looking towards a three race day. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, how uh, yesterday uh, panned out. Uh, and this is our highlights clip. <laughs> Welcome then to the second day of the Menorca 52 Super Series Sailing Week here in the Sunshine Island of Menorca. Yesterday a cloudy day, very bumpy, very changeable conditions on the water, but a brighter day today and a bright future ahead for the 52 Super Series and the TP52 class. There's a lot of energy around the class, around the sport. I think there's a lot of people who are looking forward to 2018 and continuing on building on the foundations of the great circuit that's been put in place here over the past few years. So uh, looking forward to a great 18 and beyond. That's going to be great. I mean, two new venues, new venue in Croatia, the way to kick off the season, a lot of new boats, it sounds like. We've all got yardsticks on each other now after three years with these boats. And so it'll be fun to kind of wipe the slate clean and see how we all fare in uh, June in Croatia. There will be a number of new boats. I think last count, five, six, seven. It should be very competitive as an indication of his commitment to the class. The idea of racing against cup teams next year, is that exciting? I think it's always exciting. You know, the class had that in the past. And uh, when you had that, that brought a good energy. It brought a lot of marketing energy and, and visibility to the class. Well, the whole idea of this class, you know, is to race against the best in the world. If we can grow this fleet one boat at a time, we're thrilled. This is the best racing in the world uh, at the moment in, in any big boat monohull racing. This is it. Well, an exciting future for the 52 Super Series, but the future is really now and back onto the water where the tension is ever higher. It's day number two, race number two, and the race gets away in eight or nine knots of breeze from 350. It's a fairly short uh, beat, 1.7 miles. Breeze is quite patchy, still some leftover sea. It's 11 o'clock uh, when the warning signal goes, and all three title contenders start off the line side by side. Quantum Racing at the best start, lead away from Azura. Azura have to tack off early, Platoon are okay. Not really special, but they're uh, hanging there quite nicely. Quantum Racing sell the first beat best. They lead at the top mark from Azura, Allegri, Platoon, Sled and Brunanusek. But really the race is decided on the second run. Gladiator and uh, Brunanusek make a nice gain down the run. Platoon also gain uh, on the last run. At the finish line, it's Brunanusek through the line first, Platoon through in second, Gladiator third, fourth Azura, fifth Sorsha, and Quantum Racing, after that big lead, end up coming through in seventh and losing points to their two main challengers. We saw an opportunity on the last downwind. Quantum and Azura sell into that big hole and uh, and uh, we jive early and uh, we had a win and a lot of sm smiley and happy faces in the team. It's very rude to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's very rude. <laughs> Since Luna Rosa, we were not sailing together, we're so very happy. And he showed that he's uh, one of the greatest tacticians and together with uh, Morgan Larson, it's a great couple. We did everything uh, very well in uh, every department from the start to the first beat, first round, second beat. And we just made one mistake that was really, really expensive. Six position like that was a bit cruel. Still have potentially eight races, so plenty of time to catch up. 
The speed confidence is good on the boat and the team spirit is really good. I'm pretty happy with the team. Maybe we have a little bit of luck and we win it. Maybe. <laughs> After two races, it's Azura leading on five points uh, on count back just ahead of Gladiator, who are also on five points. Platoon on eight points, Brunenasek 10 points, and Sled on 11 points. A good day overall for the uh, Platoon, then uh, gaining five points on Quantum Racing to be seven points uh, clear of the third place boat. And Platoon now six points behind Azura, having gained two places today. Another day in Menorca when the patience of the fleet really has been tested. That's uh, two days of racing and only two races sailed. But a good day overall for Platoon, uh, moving uh, a little bit closer to Azura and stepping clear of Quantum Racing. Can Quantum Racing and can Platoon fight back over the next few days? And can Azura hold on and win the circuit? for yesterday's one uh, and only race, uh, a win for Brennesek uh, and uh, Platoon just moving a little bit closer to the uh, top of the table, putting Azura under just a little bit more pressure. We're joined uh, by Agustin uh, Zulueta, the CEO of the 52 Super Series. Agustin, we're looking at a very rosy future for next season, aren't we? Yes, yes, yes. Well, well actually we have uh, like eight new uh, buildings confirmed, so we expect to have a participation between 13 and uh, 14 boats, which is a guarantee of uh, a good, very good future for the for the series and uh, looking forward to it. How much of that is driven by the uh, the decision we're expecting from the America's Cup? Well, I mean, I don't know. Well, the the, the news uh, are a little bit uh, a little bit of jungle drums, isn't yeah, it? preliminary. But, but uh, of course, the 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 news is that America's the America's Cup is coming back to the to the Monhols, which is a very good news. Uh, I would say the future Super Series right now is. Uh, probably the best platform in the world to, to, to be training for this uh, opportunity. And I hope to have uh, some of the teams uh, joining us next year. And we're talking about eight new, bu new builds confirmed. There is some of that rumor or what do you feel in your, in your gut? Well, I would say uh, two new builds and uh, I'm probably... Two new teams we're talking about for next season. Uh, yes, two new teams uh, and, uh, well, uh, the Brazilian Eduardo Sousa Ramos is coming back to the, to the fleet. And so uh, he, had, he was the owner from Brazil who had Phoenix originally? Yes, originally Phoenix. Uh, he, was, he, he did very well. He's an owner driver. He, uh, uh, he was, uh, 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 I think he was second on the World Championship uh, two years ago right. and, and, and he's, uh, he's coming back to the fleet, uh, very motivated. He's going to build a new boat in, in Valencia, in Kimarin, and it's going to be a boating boat and it's, uh, it's everything we say right now. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, I would say um, the, the new eight boats are going to be at the top of the, of the, of the level and I would say the, the, the level of the fleet is, is amazing right now. What's the general response from our owners? There, everybody seems to be right up for the challenge of racing against some very high level teams yeah well we have uh, yesterday the owners uh, dinner and uh, and all the owners were very 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 motivated for uh, with uh, next year season uh, and with the future of the super series and we look forward to see if the if the if some of the potential teams of the cup uh, join us in the future but uh, i'm sure they will yeah. an exciting time exciting times for yourself yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, well, I was, I was uh, particularly joined to the, to the, to the uh, America's Cup for five editions. So I will be b more than happy to, to, to have some of the, of Your the old teams. Friends involved. back. Yeah. <laughs> eh? So yeah, but, but I, I'm, I'm very proud to, uh, to have the, the Super Series at the level that they are right now. I think all the owners are. Uh, very happy with the with the with the circuit and uh, looking forward to the new venues next year. So, so, so new venues. We're going to Croatia for two venues, uh, one after the other, beginning of the season. Yeah, it's the first time. Why, the why Croatia? Well, I, I would say uh, we, if you if you love sailing and you uh, you love good scenery, you have to go to Croatia so, some sometimes. So I would say we have the best partner possible in uh, in Croatia, uh, Di Marine. Uh, they own a lot of marinas marinas in Croatia, Greece, and uh, and um, and Turkey. And uh, we will visit uh, Sivenik and Sadar. So Di Marine is a really good group, and I will I will say that uh, it will be a very good event. And uh, and then we will have to. Uh, to go to uh, to uh, the Atlantic, I will say the Rolex TP52 World Championship will be uh, an amazing uh, event in in Cascais. So um, and then return to to Spain. So I will say 2018 is going to be a really good season. Thank you very much, Agustin. Well, we're going to go on the water just now. Hopefully, enjoying uh, Jenny Jenny Tullock, her uh, eyes and ears and the voice uh, on the water for the 52 Super Series. Jenny, how's it looking? 
It is a beautiful day out here today. <laughs> it is absolutely stunning. The Thank waves you. that the te that the fleet has been Perfect. fighting yeah. against the past two days have sort of died. So you can see now we have a very calm, about eight to ten knots. It's beautiful. We're hoping the breeze will hold for all three races this afternoon. And you can hear the race committee there just putting up the four-minute flag. So a very slight delay, but now we are into the start series. All the boats with their jibs up now. I think we might see a split fleet here at the start. I know some of the teams are thinking that while the breeze is a little bit further right this morning, they might be fighting for this right side because geographically we're still close to the shore. But it definitely looks like there might be a little bit better pressure out offshore. So I think perhaps we'll see a couple guys fighting hard for that pen end. And it's going to be amazing racing out here, Andy. But yeah, Sea State does look to be a lot better, much flatter, and the breeze, as you said, between 8 and 10 knots, uh, more from the uh, south today. So the pressure uh, is uh, on Azura to a certain extent after uh, Platoon had a good day yesterday. But really the, uh, the fleet was uh, a little bit up and down, quantum racing leading by... Uh, over 250 meters early on in the uh, in the race and then losing out on the second run just got caught out in the right hand corner coming down the run and uh, very light uh, pressure got themselves into a little bit of a hole uh, and lost six places and in the uh, regatta standings at the top of the table it's uh, between uh, gladiator who have uh, had a pretty pretty solid start to the regatta they uh, made a good gain up the first, uh, first beat yesterday and that kept themselves pretty much in contention uh, all the way around the course and they came good down the uh, second run. So Gladiator tied with Azura just now, both on five points. Platoon on eight, Brunenisek uh, on uh, ten and Sled on eleven. Uh, and... Uh, Quantum Racing poised in six. So Quantum really need to have a good day. It need to have some good, a good start. They had a good start yesterday. And we're at uh, one minute and 42 seconds before the start. Just coming in. Hopefully we can join uh, Jenny Tullock for the start. Jenny, are you hearing us? Got you now, Andy. Sorry about that earlier. We are, as you said, getting a very close fight here lining up for the start. And in fact, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but Quantum Racing and Azura already locked into a bit of a match race. The two of them next to each other with Platoon just above Quantum. So the three teams fighting for the overall series already fighting for the start of this race. And as I was saying earlier, I thought it might be a pin end fight, but I think these guys fighting a bit more towards the middle of the line. It looks like Sled, the white boat, lining up down there for the pin end start. One minute horn has just gone. Quantum Racing going a little bit high mode here, try to give themselves a bit of weather distance from Azura. Platoon actually still rolling over the top towards Quantum. The boats that will be fighting hardest for the boat end here just behind me will be Gazprom, followed by Sorsha and the Swedish boat Ron farthest to the right, but in the middle of the pack it is still Platoon. Quantum and Azura just slowly eking their way forward and then down at the pin, Poprek and Sled and Gladiator are going to be fighting hard for that pin. In fact, I can't see Sled anymore. They've lost their distance, but I think the boat's getting a little bit too close to the starting line here. I'm not sure the time at this moment, Andy, but it looks really tight. Someone's definitely going to be over. It is, and just seeing Azura just getting squeezed slightly. But once again, we're seeing the three main protagonists line up alongside each other. Platoon uh, above Quantum Racing and Azura just to lure uh, of, uh, of Quantum. It looks like this time Platoon will make the better start, although we are hearing a recall, Jen. <laughs> yeah, so the general recall flag has gone up. I think the race committee was having the same problem that I was having. The middle of the pack led by, it's, it wasn't Platoon, but the other gray boat in the middle, pushing forward at about 20 seconds Sorcha, to the line. Yeah, Sorcha just dragged the whole fleet up with them. So all of a sudden, it was somewhere between three and six boats over in the middle of the line. And that's too hard for Maria Treo and the race committee team to call which boats over, which boats are not. So a general recall here on what is the third day of racing for an excited fleet having maybe just a little bit calmer waters means they all pulled their trigger a bit, a bit earlier, a bit too soon.
I think there's just a, a matter of urgency. We're going to try and get three races in today, I hope. Um, having just had one race a day so far, then I think, uh, as you say, Maria Torrijo really keen to try and get this regatta closer to schedule. But in the meantime, I think the, uh, the team's quite happy to just go for a few minutes and uh, line up alongside each other. Just check their settings before they come back. <laughs> I was just thinking that the one team that seems very comfortable in their settings, Quantum Racing, was the very first to pull out of that. And you can see them just emerging behind the whole rest of the pack. And everyone else seemed very happy to kind of do that little tuning run, that tuning test. Gladiator still continuing the tuning test. And I think Gladiator perhaps was the boat who came out the best in that. They ended up about a boat length forward of everyone else yeah. as they now all are pulling out and going back to the start line. So that'll be a happy Ed Baird and Tony Langley. At least they'll feel like they pulled the trigger appropriately. I don't know whether they were one of the boats over. Of course, that could give them a big advantage, but they looked good after that. But as I said, Jenna, interesting to see once again, the three main protagonists line up side by side as they did yesterday. Quantum Racing, Azura and Platoon all side by side off the line. It is such a little match race. I mean, it's a three vote match race, but yeah. it's really funny to see them engage. And Quantum actually was engaging Azura there. I mean, they were up behind their stern kind of doing a little match race dance wiggle and then picked the windward side basically and went for a big luff and took the windward side. And Platoon was just hanging out to windward of them and was happy to then start close to their neighbors. And I think that's showing confidence for all three teams. I mean, Azura and, and many teams are often very happy to be the lured most boat in a start line like that. You're often the boat that then wins that battle. And Quantum clearly seemed to be happy starting to their weather side. They seem confident in that case in their speed and being able to hold their lane. And Platoon, of course, just sitting off the two of them must be happy in their speed and in their ability to pull the trigger. So I think the three of them having that little duel and yet the way that they all came out of that duel is a really interesting psychological game that they're already playing. I mean, we are so early in this regatta. There's been two days of racing, but there's only been two races. So today, easily, with three points on the board, with three races on the board, we could double the amount of points that have already been played. So I think it's going to be amazing to see that, that battle continue throughout the week. And it is very difficult to maintain your uh, momentum and maintain the focus at the same level all the way through the day in a three-race day, isn't it? Uh, on the one hand, if you can maintain that consistency and return a good score over the day, fantastic. But if you have a bad one to start with, it's hard to then come back, isn't it? I mean, I think if, if you were to ask Quantum Racing yesterday, they went from winning the race by 800 meters at the top mark, leading all the it's way around, nothing, it? and then lose. Yeah, but then on the, on the final leg, yeah, they dropped back to seventh. So for them, perhaps mentally, it was best to be able to get to get no more racing, to have the breeze die, to go no, home completely. and regroup and come back to a day like this and think, you know, we'll come out fighting and we'll, and we'll be winning again like we were yesterday. We just won't sail into a hole like that. Whereas everyone else is going, uh, there's nothing in it. Azura's maybe leading right now, but there's absolutely nothing in it. There's three races on the board and there's only two points scored already. So it's going to be a really impressive day. And if they're fighting that hard this early, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like on Saturday when they're fighting for not only the title here, but the title of the season. In. Exactly. I mean, it's such a contrast with last year. I think we uh, we looked at the, the numbers from last year. At this point last year, Quantum Racing, uh, with three days to the end of the season, were 68 points ahead. And today they have, uh, they have some work to do. But if there's one team which could pull this off uh, and win the title from third place and uh, a small deficit, then it would be Quantum Racing. I know they're absolutely up for it. And they've sailed, uh, they've sailed really well the first couple of days. Things just haven't gone their way. But I think as well, the team that might be fighting even the hardest to win the series overall is Platoon, because they're the only one of those two teams, of those three teams, who hasn't won the series yet. So for Harm Muller Spear, the owner and driver, for the tactician, John Kostecki, that is a huge achievement if they're gonna be able to pull it off against the two heavyweights. And to be beating Quantum Racing overall and in this regatta right now for Platoon, I mean, they've gotta be feeling strong. They have to be, but uh I mean, in fairness, the first couple of days, they haven't started as well. They have followed their uh, kind of modus operandi, if you like. They've started uh, fairly conservatively, worked their way up through the fleet, and they have just, uh, certainly yesterday, they got there in the end. But they were pretty deep early on, uh, and uh, 
Not sure whether they can carry on with that. I think they may need to start uh, pushing a little bit more risk in the final days. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. And equally, you know, Azura, the uh, Latin, Latin temperament, it can be pricked if it goes badly and they, they really, their resolve will be tested over the next, uh, next three days. It is sort of the way that, that John Kostecki rolls, though, isn't it? The, Absolutely. The slow start, not just to the regatta, but to every race. I mean, he's always consistently there, but he's never winning off the start line. He's never putting their boat in a position where they would either win or be 10th. He's putting them in a position where they'll either be fourth or sixth or maybe third, and they'll, and they'll just sneak their way one point here, one point there, each leg to get back into sort of the top three. And I think the regatta that we saw them win earlier this season was a bit like that. They were just consistently moving through the pack. And for them to be sitting third right now, as you say, yeah, they've got three points behind Azura, but, but I, don't, I bet they're not too concerned about that. No, I don't think so. And, and Harm has been playing it down. You know, he says uh, winning the World Championships was the big thing this season. They've been on the podium uh, two or three times. Certainly the first uh, three regattas of the season, they were, all, were second in Key West, second in Miami, and then one in Scarlino. I mean, to a certain extent, he feels like uh, a lot of the work is done this season. A lot of his achievements uh, that he was uh, looking for are already ticked off. And as he said... If he could win the title, that would be a huge bonus. But uh, to finish on the podium, he'd still be a pretty happy man. <laughs> so maybe the pressure's off on that team. Maybe they uh, are just able to swing for the fences. <laughs> he certainly plays it down, you know, but he's also, you know, we know that on the boat, he does get quite wound up. Uh, and uh, I think that is one thing which has improved in his own personal temperament over the, the uh, over last, last season. I know it was uh, pretty fiery at times. And I think that uh, has been... He's been much more measured this season. I mean, obviously, that comes, that obviously comes with the success, you know, having yes. put, put some uh, great scores on the, on the board to start with early on the season, then it's not, uh, not so crucial then. Every, every point is not as uh, important. You can afford to relax a little bit, have uh, confidence in the team, and certainly their boat is quick. Well, you could also say that there's a fiery personality on all three of those Oh, absolutely, boats. I mean, completely. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what's fascinating, you know? Yeah, for, for Platoon, it's the driver, because John Kostecki is quite measured. He's quite calm, as, as we say, even the way he plays tactically, he's quite calm. But then on Azura, Vasco Vascoto, their tactician, quite fiery, Italian, emotional. And then on Quantum Racing, Terry Hutchinson, the same. I mean, he's got every American attribute in terms of being loud and boisterous and everything on board. And, and Doug DeVos, the calm, sort of measured owner on the back. So, so maybe it's the passion that's really required to have these teams be at the top like that, be fighting for it. But as you said, maybe for harm, just reeling it in just a little bit because as the driver sometimes if you're if you're too powered up if you're too if you're too emotional then you can make mistakes and so just maybe just reeling it in that tiny bit's been the difference this year exactly and it really is about sealing the boat fast anyway we're just coming into uh, one minute before the start Jen still uh, looking like the same kind of lineup yeah, one minute to go, and in fact, here we go. The engagement with Quantum Racing and Azura just behind us. Quantum Racing just trying to tack behind the stern of Azura. Azura just tried to defend with a huge, huge, huge head to win there, and Quantum Racing has again gone for the windward side of Azura. They could have just accelerated below Azura. They chose not to. They are instead now luffing pop prep, but they seem to be deciding this is their place. They want to be to windward of Azura. Platoon again one more boat away but again just to windward of both of those guys now i think the problem here we only have 25 seconds to go to the start line there are three boats between us and the committee boat in quantum looking to be in quite control above them pop rec, above them platoon so platoon and john kostecki and harmonio spear that we were just talking about they're going to be in trouble here i don't know if there's going to be room 10 seconds to go to the start azura bearing away for the start line the boat at the pen might be over quantum bearing away here platoon actually just going to be in able to sneak in here three seconds to go boom that's the gun platoon a couple seconds late but they'll take it they wanted the right clearly they've started to win where this might be this might be game to platoon here if the right side works out that was an excellent start indeed azura not uh, not as not bad at all either just uh, nicely forward on the line with a good pace quantum very slightly slower and I was calling the boat at the, at the pin end over early, but I think they did just do a big duck right near the end. So I don't, I don't think they were over, but they might have just had to tack out. So I think that's it's looking like racing, it's, isn't it? Ah, uh, okay. 
run. Or sled as well. There's a white boat down underneath there. But um, we've just had to tack ourselves on the motorboat to go <laughs> away from Poprec. Poprec had the, the worst of those starts at the boat end. They basically got rolled by platoon and instantly tacked out here. Which I think, as we said, if the right side pays, this won't be a bad spot to be. But of course, platoon heading towards the middle. But as Quantum Racing tacks behind platoon stern here, this is going to be the question. Whether platoon continues, follows Azura, protects against Azura, fights for the lead, or whether they tack and they're rolling into attack here. So Platoon like the right hard enough. They are facing Quantum Racing. They want this right-hand side. They want to be winning this race. They want to gain points on Azura. I think this will be a right-hand side race course. I think so. And it's always that thing in a three-cornered three fight where you have two boats engaged. That's instantly an advantage to the other boat. They're uh, off the hook a little bit. And just now it looks like Platoon, uh, sorry, that uh, Qu uh, Quantum and uh, Platoon are a little bit engaged to Azura's advantage. Well, yeah, Platoon face plan and Quantum means yeah. Quantum had to tack off again. So unfortunately for Quantum now, I think they're ducking Azura. So it's going to be a tough ping pong battle for them if they try <laughs> to get back to the right here. It's going to be, they'll have to sail past Azura's line, tack up again, and then hope that they don't get they don't hit, hit again later on down the pack. But at this moment, we've now got, Poprec has just tacked back. So we have four boats continuing on port, which is to windward of us, Brunenaset Gazprom, then Platoon. I can't quite see the two boats further along, but I think that's Sled and maybe Ron Racing. As you said, they both had to tack out from the pen. And then we've got five boats continuing on starboard on the far side. So Gladiator for sure continuing on starboard, but they're falling back a little bit. They might have to tack off later on. I can't see Andy in front of them. Is it Prevetsa that's, that's almost right. leading from the left? Yeah, Ran and Prevetsa on that left side uh, are uh, top of the table just now on, uh, on virtual. Sorsion third, Gladiator fourth, Quantum Azura platoon. But it's very close between these, uh, these three. And certainly in the water, you'd have platoon ahead. Platoon moving quite nicely just now. <laughs> Our motorboat is moving quite nicely as well, which means everything is suddenly getting wet here on board. Oh I dear. think I'm, I'm happy that I wasn't out on the water yesterday. It sounds like the chop that they were sailing through, Tony Ray compared it to being off piste with moguls. And he said today would be like a Deer Valley corduroy day. <laughs> so I think these tiny waves that are getting us wet are nothing compared to what we had yesterday. But it is just beautiful out here. It's about, it's as we go up the course a little bit here, it's about 10 knots and i'm just noticing that back of the fleet someone's got their jib down i think Allegra, that's Allegra, isn't so it? yeah have we got any word on what happened i don't think so it's possibly a technical issue but oh no oh, it's unfortunate for the the second italian team in the fleet here that's especially on a three race day you don't want to have to be having issues on the first of the race but we'll find out we'll get back to you guys viewers about what's going on there with Allegre. Meanwhile, out on the right-hand side here, I am just underneath Brennanisek and Platoon. And it looks to me, in fact, like Brennanisek Gazprom is actually doing a little bit better here. They're pulling out, just eking out barely over Platoon, but they are both going higher and faster forward. So big gains here for the guys on Brennanisek Gazprom. It's gonna make them very, very happy, especially after having had such a good race yesterday. Just got some shots there, Jen, off, uh, off Allegra. Looks like they have a problem with the gym or the halyard. There's some guys on the foredeck working. Hopefully they can get that sorted out quickly and get uh, ready for uh, race number two. But uh, not a good situation for Allegra, having suffered that disappointment back in Porto Cervo when they, uh, they lost the mast. Fought back and uh, stepped their uh, previous mast for uh, the uh, Mallorcan regatta. Anyway, looking on the water just now, looking at Platoon. Platoon certainly the best of the uh, that group uh, which started off the right, end, right side of the line. Breeze looks to have built slightly, Jen, perhaps. Yeah, it's it's really nice as we move up in here. And what was interesting is it, it did look like Brennanisek was was pinching off Platoon. Platoon went for the tack and had a much 
better maneuver than Brnenisek. I mean, instantly after the tack, they've gained back a boat length and a half. So Brnenisek, unfortunately, they might have the speed in a straight line, but it doesn't look like they've quite got the maneuvers nailed the way that Platoon does. So again, Platoon back in the lead here, at least out on this right-hand side. Brnenisek just off their hip has also tacked back onto starboard. Well, it looks like the guys way further left, including Quantum Racing and Gladiator, are continuing on starboard and I think earlier I was calling that Gladiator was falling back but it seems like now yeah. they've been able to hold and maybe even pull forward. Yeah we're just looking in the long lens at that left side it looked like uh, Quantum Racing was slightly more powered up than uh, the boats on the right than uh, Platoon in particular as indeed did the Gladiator so there may be some more wind pressure some stronger breeze out on that left side. I believe it. It looked that way this morning before the start. I was calling either breeze on the left or shift on the right. And it's it's one of those times where you either have to believe your forecast big, big time, believe your navigator, your strategist, and your coach, or just gamble, you know, and go one way or the other, it's going to work out. And I think with Platoon Azura and Quantum, they're all so eyes on each other that when they saw each other all fighting for the right, they felt comfortable and confident to go, all right, well, at least we'll be with our competitors here. And yet Quantum got bounced to the left. And at that point, when you're getting bounced away behind your competitors, you go, fine, I'll gamble the other way. It's not what I wanted originally, but I'll take the left and we'll see if that pays. Which one are you seeing on virtual is paying, Andy? It's interesting because at the moment, Quantum, uh, Sorsha and uh, Ram Racing in particular down that left side, they certainly seem to be going into a progressive header, uh, diverging away from the uh, the. the uh, courses of the boats to the right so platoon and lifting slightly along with uh, Brunenisek but as you said probably more pressure on that left side and we're just seeing these three boats on the left tacking back uh, onto port and they will uh, or certainly the two out in the furthest left are going to converge with quantum just now quantum have been a little bit more conservative and have a slightly higher line than uh, the uh, three boats to their leeward, out to their left. I would say that was Ran Racing, Sorsha, and I think Prevetsa. And it looks to me like Quantum with the higher line and even having to do the two tacks ping pong. It looks like they're crossing quite easily. Yeah, it looks like it on the on the virtual as well. Right. Well, we've we got, know they're fast. <laughs> we've, got, we've got Quantum racing ahead uh, on the water alongside Gladiator. Gladiator really going well at this regatta. I think the uh, the setup on the boat really strong, but also Tony uh, Tony Langley's done so much racing this year. I think they're absolutely on fire. <laughs> I was racing in Cow's Week in a boat twice their size. It was a hundred footer, and Gladiator came ripping down next to us in almost 40 knots, where we had decided not to set a kite, and they had their big, huge red Gladiator kite, and you could just see the smile on Tony Langley's face from miles away. And then as they rolled past us, I mean, you could actually see it up close. It was amazing. It was great to see their team just enjoying it. And I think that's what it's all about for him is enjoying the racing. As you say, he's doing a lot of it. He's getting much better every single regatta. And it's great to see how well the partnership is with him and Ed Baird. And ultimately, he's sailing so well against some professional drivers out here. Yeah, I think they have a great relationship. Uh, kind of mutual, uh, mu mutual tr trust, mutual respect. And uh, I think that relationship will go from strength to strength. And they are, uh, as we said, have a share of the uh, overall lead. In fact, uh, projected points would have them leading the regatta at the moment. So, Brenner, sec, we're looking at them just now. They are uh, eighth on the water. So, Brenner, sec, originally on. So Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, they won that race yesterday, this uh, partnership between Morgan Larson and uh, Francesco Bruni. Working well yesterday, have a little bit of work to do today. Francesco definitely seemed to have a little spring in his step to be back in the 52s. And I think ultimately to know that the next America's Cup will be back in Monohulls. I mean, he said he's so happy to be sailing in this fleet again to know that next year the fleet will be growing even bigger as well. And yet, unfortunately, I think for those guys, it looks like they had better speed on port tack. Not only was their, was their tack not amazing, but I think on starboard, they've just struggled with speed here. They're 
like all the time compared to Platoon. Otherwise, Platoon has put their foot down and yeah. gone for for speed mode, which might be the case, at least right now. They're happy to get speed mode to get towards Gladiator and, and Quantum and at least ensure that they will be protecting against them for now, which it looks like they're doing. Right now, we're seeing the cross between Platoon and Gladiator, and Platoon is leading that cross, and I think in about 10 seconds, Platoon will be leading the cross with Quantum as well. So Quantum's decision now to tack underneath or to continue behind and try to get out to this right-hand side, and it looks like Terry Hutchinson is calling for continuing on there. McCulley have all these strategists maybe finally deciding if they can get the right at this point take it hope you get the shift we're very close to the top mark as well there's probably only another um 700 meters or so so too many tacks here and getting pinned out to the left would be not an advantage any longer certainly credit to uh john kostecki and uh, jordi Calafa on uh, on the platoon a nice uh, first beat talked a little bit just before the start about them perhaps needing to push the uh, risk a little bit more that's Pretty much what John Kostecki said uh, a couple of days ago, that maybe they'd have to do that. Certainly they had the, uh, the better start, and they're making that pay just now as they cross in front of uh, Quantum Racing. Meantime, Azura down in 10th. Really got you themselves into the traffic, uh, and... Uh, yeah, they struggle there in the middle of the, of the fleet because they, they definitely crossed Quantum earlier. They had, they had tacked with Platoon, Platoon faced Quantum, and they ended up... And instead of gaining as Quantum gained exactly. and, and passing that fleet on the left, something happened in there. So I'm not sure what's gone wrong with Azura. It might be they had two bad maneuvers. Perhaps they weren't in the right mode. But interesting to see the series leaders and regatta leaders not quite pulling it off this race. As well, I thought the positioning of Brennanisek just now when they tapped was, was very strange. No Morgan, I, I think he's a great coach. I, I think he's a great sailor. But they could have probably face quantum racing there and instead they kind of tacked about four boat links to leeward so they let quantum racing go uh, coming out here to the right hand side and, and ultimately it wasn't necessarily like actually, quantum, actually racing's quantum racing's just gone for the tack anyway on their own about two minutes later so maybe there's a little gain to the left that is helping to put more distance on everyone behind but I think that's going to hurt Brennanisek. In the meantime, the virtual showing us that Paprek are in the, in the mix coming into this top mark. They seem to have had a, a reasonable beat. Not really sure whether that's uh, the case on the water. I think they're perhaps closer to the mark, but it's really about getting to the, uh, the starboard tack ley line. I think that's possibly what Brennanisek were looking for as uh, it's going to be very busy at the top mark by the looks of things. Yeah, the top mark, but it just looked like Paprek might be, in, in fact, in about fourth place. They, they possibly are going to cross Gladiator here. They've come not from nowhere. They, they were the boat that tacked out at the boat in, so they got the first bit of that right side and that first ability to tack back on a ship. But I'm not sure what happened in the left. It's good for them. I mean, they're sort of that amateur team. They, they took the last event off, maybe even the last two events off. So to come back here firing like this, it's going to make them really happy. And did they had a good, uh, good first beat or good uh, first circuit, first round uh, on the ra on day one? They have uh, Jerome Mion, who was the uh, 470 representative, the 470 crew uh, in uh, Rio, calling tactics, and he's back uh, on board. He was on board earlier on this season, and is doing a very good job. But it's. Uh, Swings and roundabouts really coming into this top mark. Platoon uh, leading Quantum with Sled third. Azura coming back up into the mix. Platoon, I think, uh, in control. little lift on that left side of the uh, approach to the windward mark. I think for uh, Quantum, Quantum gaining a little bit of gauge on, on uh, Platoon, although Platoon perhaps just coming down to line up for the mark. Or come down towards the uh, starboard tat ley line. Certainly Quantum, Sled and Azura seem to have got a little uh, lefty, a little lift. 
and the difference between uh, platoon and quantum reducing all the time. So platoon coming out to, to the ley line, they'll tack uh, shortly. So there go uh, platoon make their tack. Now we're uh, at the windward mark. This is race number three of the uh, Menorca 52 Super Series Sailing Week. Looking back uh, downwind towards the entrance to Mahon uh, and the harbour there and on the, uh, the left of the picture. We're coming up to the top mark. And there you go, platoon then, Harmuller Spear, John Kostecki, tactician, coming round the uh, top mark. First time we've seen them leading a race uh, for some time. And crucially, they have uh, quantum racing behind them. We're just looking at uh, Sled making a big duck in the background. So Andy, I'm not sure if you can hear me, yeah. but we have got Platoon rounding the top mark. So we were talking about the consistency of that boat off the start line, putting themselves in about third. And I think we were, I was worried about where they were set up and then they just nailed it. I say they normally don't put themselves in those, in those risky positions, but you, you said it right. They need to start putting a little more risk on the line if they want to win this regatta. And it looks like that was what that start was all about. They could have gotten held out at the boat end and instead right at the right time they were able to accelerate they they nailed the gun and here they are leading this race it's it's an amazing testament to that decision behind them quantum racing pulling off the second place here you can see platoon just now from where we are starting with their spinnaker maybe even a little late with their spinnaker hoist there i think that was that was possibly a mistake we should quantum racing to have a better set than that i would want their spinnaker to be set and and pulling at the mark instead of just being set at the mark so platoon here though with a boat length maybe two boat lengths and yes quantum set here their kite will be full instantly at the mark there just a very slick maneuver there for quantum just behind quantum as you said pop rec recycledge into third place here so the three boats that were the three boats at the committee boat in rounding this top mark in the top three well done to them choosing the right hand side and then in fourth the boat that led from the pin end side gladiator and they they had a hard time of it they didn't have the best start at the pin but they showed that they are fast they held their position they pulled off the lead from the left um tony langley and ed bear there driving that red spinnaker into fourth place here banana set gazprom sixth place just behind them provetza the turkish team Peter Holmberg having just come from a hurricane at his home to be fired up to be here. His home's okay. He said he's happy to be here now. Just behind them as overall got a leader and the overall, overall series, series leaders. Not having a great race. Currently sitting in seventh place, but we can expect them to pick off a couple of positions, I think, perhaps during this race. And the GBR boat, the Swedish boat, Ron, and unfortunately in last place right now, Sled, the American Japanese team, the white boat. So we will expect to see some changes in position there in fact i think sorcha just now is getting oh no not getting rolled by ron as ron is going for the drive set so the first drive set of the group and unfortunately for ron their kite is not quite coming out as well as they would have liked so they'd want the drive set to come uh, okay this is out now ron's got it going and i think maybe we should see if we get another right shift again otherwise i think perhaps on the downwind you'd happy you're happier to stay in more pressure and i like the rest of the fleet going out to that left-hand side of the race course. But I think for Ron, they were far enough behind. They're rolling the dice here, hand, Andy. They're hoping for the best. Indeed, but uh, good first beat, as you said, uh, for uh, Platoon leading Quantum. Paprek, uh, first to tack away out to the right off the uh, signal boat end of the line, get themselves round the top mark in uh, third place. Gladiator round in fourth. They were second overall going into this race uh, for the regatta. Then Brunanasek, Provetza, Azura, Sorsha, Ran, and Sled and Allegra, we know down ne near the uh, start line trying to get themselves sorted out. But Platoon there uh, under pressure. Of course, these two <laughs> boats uh, all part of the same uh, quantum race team uh, stable, if you like. Part of a three boat program. 
Quantum Platoon and uh, Gladiator, and I think there's no doubt that that uh, Quantum program has really worked for all three boats, and I'm sure that uh, some of the uh, teams coming into the circuit next year will be talking with uh, with Quantum. And I know and, that I spoke with uh, I spoke with Ed Reynolds about this earlier on the season. And said, you know, what uh, what are your resources like? What uh, how many teams can you take and uh, really deliver the same level of uh, information? And he said they could do five or six without any problems. So. Uh, there's an opportunity, but uh, for sure it's worked for uh, Platoon and it's worked for uh, Gladiator in particular. I uh, hear Andy, we're seeing that two boat match continue as well. Ron Racing went for the early jive, then Azura about 30 seconds later jived and instantly thereafter a Quantum Racing jive. So an, an interesting um, protecting from in front and allowing a little bit of a split in Quantum Racing and Platoon. Now we've got a after that, we've got Sled and I believe Poprec and Gladiator all jive as well. So maybe a couple more. I believe this right hand side and this right shift will be better than the left hand side pressure. Just looking at, uh, at Ran Racing then, the winners in uh, Porto Cervo not made the best uh, start to this regatta. Lying uh, in fifth for the uh, season, for the uh, circuit so far. Trying to catch up with uh, Prevetza, are still 20 points behind. We spoke with uh, Steve Hales uh, just before the regatta started and they said they really wanted to check out uh, from this season with a strong finish. They certainly have some, uh, some work to do, the seventh and a tenth from the first two races. I do probably like the jibe set then for them. I think if, they, if they've had a tough regatta so far and then we're rounding this race deep as well, it was a good roll of the dice to give themselves some leverage. At the moment, they're driving back now, in fact. So we'll see whether it's paid off or not. But if they're trying to put some points, as you said, 20 points on the board to catch up to Provetza in the overall series, they've got a lot of work to do here to try to move up into fourth overall. And I'm not sure at this point if it has paid off. After the jibe, watching their angle, it doesn't necessarily look any better. In fact, perhaps it might be. A, no, I think they'll still be ahead of the two boats behind. Um, but the rest of the fleet coming across now on port looking very good. I think for the trimmers and the drivers today, this downwind will be a very <coughs> different experience than what they've had the last two days. The, the ridiculous chop and washing machines conditions that they've had the last two days, I'm sure, have tested everyone's patience and skill. And I think while it still looks like chop to maybe a dinghy sailor, this relatively <laughs> flat water here is, is making it a bit It's all relative though, everyone. isn't it? I mean, when you saw the images coming in from the first two days, it was like the Southern Ocean with no wind. <laughs> I think Fergal was it, was telling you guys he felt like he was seasick and it wasn't even it w there was no wind it was just waves doing it which yeah, is exactly. unfortunate. So Zura seemed to be going uh, quite well down this run made a a place perhaps, but it's really all about the coordination between the helmsman uh, and the trimmers in the seaway. Yeah, we know Azura has that nailed as well. Guillermo Parada, an, an excellent driver. Kelly Kikiri, an excellent trimmer as well. I think we should expect to assume that they're fast on downwinds. They're one of the best professional drivers in the fleet. And they are, even to our eye, we're sort of we're lined up with them going their same speed right now. And it just looks like they're motoring over, at least um, underneath them, motoring over Poprec and possibly making gains on Quantum. Seems like Quantum may have made a gain against uh, Platoon, but that may be just transient. It'll be interesting to see at the bottom mark which side has paid here. I'm, I'm surprised that Platoon let the rest of the fleet all jibe so far and gave Inside them so much them, yeah. leverage. Yeah, especially knowing that, that they came from the right on that upwind and that the right is what worked out for Platoon to then see them 
allow Quantum and Azura and Poprec, the, the two boats directly behind them, as well as Azura, to get so much leverage out to that right-hand side. That's that's a little chink in the armor, maybe, of John Kostecki's reasoning. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll be a huge gain on the downwind. We'll see. Mm. Here's a little question for you about the platoon team that John Kostecki was pointing out. How many Olympic medalists have they got? Ooh, oh, you're putting me on the spot <laughs> there. Well, JK has one. Uh, Jordy. Yeah, okay, you tell me. Jordy, Morgan Reeser, and uh, they've also got Martin Kierketerp, who's the, uh, of course, the Danish 49er gold medalist as the, uh, the main grinder. <laughs> so there you That's go. Amazing. I didn't, didn't know there was as many medalists uh, involved in that team. No shortage of talent. No shortage of talent. I, and we've talked about it before, but we can talk about it again. I mean, they've got such an amazing synergy as well between JK and the two trimmers on board, between himself and Cheese and Ross Hallcrow. They've been sailing together for 20 plus years. Uh, JK and, and Cheese are family and they just, it's like they don't even need to talk probably. They just, they just sail. They speak with the driver, but they, they, they've got it nailed. So in, in terms of being able to dial into the conditions, I'm sure today they're dialing into these conditions just fine. And as we move down the course here, we've just been able to motor down as the fleets jived. It really does look like they might still be leading out on that side. Um, yeah. But it doesn't look like the advantage to Quantum that I thought maybe they'd have. Yep. And the credit also to Paprek. Paprek seemed to be managing to hang in there. They did have a show well on that first day and then faded quite badly when they missed one jibe and then found themselves going backwards uh, into the fleet. And I like their positioning. I was worried earlier about where they jibed, that they might get stuck underneath the bad air of Gladiator, but it looks like they've just, they've just been able to jibe out at the appropriate time here. They've got a decent spot just far enough away from Provetza not to be affected. And in fact, it looks like they and Quantum are getting a little bit of a header and they're sailing a little bit lower than Provetza is able to sail behind them. So um, making decent gains here. Just looking at uh, what we see with the, uh, the gain lines on Virtual, it seems like if anything, Platoon may have made a little bit of an opening relative to, uh, relative to Quantum now 70, 75 meters ahead. Yeah, it looks like it. They haven't quite crossed yet. So. No. For me, I can't exactly tell, but I would agree that when they do cross, they'll be... Uh, at the top mark, they had two boat lengths. It probably shrunk to about a boat length and a half with their late set. And I think now it might be back to two and a half. Maybe the cross is happening just about now. So maybe that's, yeah, two and a half. In fact, now the question is, which side of the bottom gates are they going to go to? We're setting up on the right-hand side gate if they went to the right-hand side of the course. And it looks like at the angle that they are on right now, they'll be laying the skate mark. So if they want to make no more maneuvers, if they want to go the way that worked on the last upwind, I would expect Platoon to come to this gate, to come out to the right-hand side here. Quantum Racing going for the drive. They'd have to drive either way to get to both marks. So it's just whether Platoon pops in a last-minute drive, but I don't expect that considering the right worked out so well earlier. And then I think we'll have to see what Quantum likes, whether they're just going to hold on for second place, which is often a very good thing, second place in this fleet. No one would turn that down. Or whether they'll try to go for a little split and go for the left. But... At this point, for them, it's just Poprec behind, and then it looks like there might be a little bit of, of a gap to fourth place, Brennan second, Gladiator. So you're probably going to be a little happy if you're uh, Platoon, you're definitely happy. And if you're Quantum, also a little bit happy there. So coming into the bottom mark now, it is Platoon. You can see Mitchy Mueller there on the bow, helping the kite in, actually now just behind. Yeah, now putting the kite in, and a really nice solid rounding there for platoon heading up with what i thought was two which is uh gaining into more like three or four boat lengths between There's themselves and quantum racing indeed and big uh, gerd uh, harbemuller the austrian man mountain uh, on the pumps <laughs> and, and ross hallcrow down below there exactly the an olympian in the uh, bobsleigh he was uh, was a uh, gerd that's a good swap. You never hear that swap before. I mean, you often hear of <laughs> rowers going to the America's Cup. You don't often hear bobsledder went to sailing. I like well, it, Andy. I'll let you into a secret. We're going to test his bobsledding skills today, later on, hopefully. 
Thanks. So Quantum Racing rounding here in second place. Uh, again, of course, an excellent rounding there by Quantum Racing. In fact, less bodies on the on the bottom there than they had on Platoon. Everyone up on the high side now within a boat length and a half. Poprec aiming for the opposite side, which I think is the unfavored gate mark. Now that we're sitting at the bottom marks, it looks like that side is at least half a boat length downwind. Um, Brennanisek jibe dropping just at the bottom here. Brennanisek also going to fight for this right-hand side. Uh, Prevetsa, I believe, will be going left following Poprec and Gladiator coming our way. So Gladiator making a switch on their sides of the race course. They were the boat that won the left-hand side, but of course they rounded the top mark in fourth. So they were aware that, that the right side was the side that paid and they are essentially rounding tied for sixth now for Gladiator. So a little bit of a drop there. I think they must have lost to Brennanisek and... Yeah. Um, and uh, Brennanisek and Preveza on the way down. Yeah. Azura there rounding in eighth. Um, and rolling right into the tack for Azura here. And this is actually going to make a difficult position here with Sorcha. You can hear them yelling at Sorcha right now. This is forcing Sorcha high, a really tough spot for Azura there. And a, a foul is going to be called probably on Sorcha, but I'm not sure. Azura attacked very quickly, forcing Sorcha away, and, and almost there was nowhere else that they could go. So maybe it'll be a green flag because everyone has stayed clear of each other from where they could go at that point in time. An interesting decision to make that attack so soon. They weren't, they weren't forced that badly by Gladiator, but they clearly wanted to get out of the bad air. Just behind Sorcha, we've got Ron racing rounding our side here. That, that left-hand early drive did not pay. They've just... Uh, rounded second last while Sorcha then rounds the far side in last. So Sled making some moves. They had rounded the top mark in 11th or in 10th place. Um, they've moved up to 8th now. And just keeping in mind, everyone, that we're missing Allegra. We, um, we saw they were having jib problems earlier or halyard problems perhaps. So Allegra not on the race course at the current moment. But it is uh, Quantum Racing has tacked off and Platoon still leading. Platoon, I think, even led the tack, probably just protecting against the middle of the course they have a, a big enough lead that they're happy to keep everyone kind of in their stern lights and it looks like that's what's happening at the moment well and of course in the uh, battle for the overall for the uh, circuit title if the position stayed the same then uh, platoon would gain to be on equal points with azura so azura need to uh, keep chipping away try and get to another couple of places been an expensive race for them in terms of their lead so far, but uh, anything can happen. Well, we talked about the mentality earlier of having a bad race first in the day, and I think of all the teams, the Italians having a bad race first in the day might be might be a bad sign. But then again, it might not be. You know, it, they might just come out of the box firing even harder next time, saying we we had the lead, we got to keep it. But I, I expect them to do better than seventh in this race. I'm surprised they haven't been able to pick off just a couple on that downwind. And we still don't really know what went so wrong for them on that first upwind. I mean, they were up there at the start. They just didn't make the right moves up the course. That's it. I mean, and I think that, you know, therein lies the rub in, the, in that, uh, you know, if they'd made a couple of obvious mistakes and then ended up uh, eighth or ninth at the top mark, then you can, uh, you can look back and realize what went wrong but it's a much bigger knock to the confidence when you're not really sure and just got bounced around a little bit and went from a good start um, to eighth or ninth within the uh, space of the first three quarters of the beat. So they will have to debrief that one uh, fairly quickly after the finish and get on, get the heads down and uh, get another good score on the, uh, on the board. Just looking just now at Ran Racing, same applies for them. Yeah, and unfortunately for Ron, they don't have the good first day or the good lead coming into this. Um, they've had a tough regatta so far with a 7th and a 10th, so they, they would like to be doing better than this, I'm sure. They're just not quite pulling it off at the moment. But as you said, they, they won a regatta earlier this year. They're a team that has the ability to put together a really solid result. Adrian Stead, an excellent tactician. Steve Hales and Adam Bischel, they're a great afterguard for Nicholas Enstrom. Um, I think it's been tough conditions here for everyone as we've been talking about the chop the past two days, the chop and light air. Today is such a different game. It's like a new regatta as well. Today, with three races in a row, it's, it's basically you could almost consider the rest of the week scratch and say you're starting from fresh, but 
for Ron Racing. You'd rather be starting from the lead here for sure. Paprek still holding in there uh, quite nicely in third place. Having gone round the uh, left hand mark looking upwind. Yeah, a team that's that's done just that, that had a bad first two races in eight and nine and now sitting third. They had a great first upwind um, that came out to the right hand side after being a little bit schooled on the start, getting rolled instantly by platoon, but it worked out for them and they've been able to hold. As we said, they're not necessarily known for having the best speed. They they haven't been sailing as much as the other teams. They don't have as many pros on board. So for them to be sitting in third and then holding it off on the downwind throughout this upwind, it looks really good, in fact. It's it's the two boat, the two blue boats here, though, that are going to be fighting for that third position. I can see Paprak just in front of us, and then just through them, the other blue boat, Brennanisek, definitely trying to make some gains out on that left-hand side. And Brennanisek, a little bit of an up-and-down team. They, they here have had a 9-1. They've sort of had an up and down season as well. Um, and Morgan Larson new to that team, but I think they might be able to pull this off and just squeeze their way into third place. I'm not sure how much better the breeze is out on the left side, but I do think when they, when they get their speed right, they get dialed in and they can go really quickly upwind. That's right, if they get off the start line and uh, go the right way, then they seem to be able to hang in there. But uh, I think you hit the, uh, the nail on the head a little bit with Brennan Sec. They've had quite a number of changes, obviously with Morgan, coming in at the start of the season, but they've still had one or two changes over the course of the different regattas, changes in the afterguard. They lost uh, Michele Avaldi, the uh, project manager and uh, main strategist uh, after a couple of regattas of the season. And then they changed to bring in uh, Tommaso Chieffi, remember, came in for uh, Porto Cervo. Tommaso now in the coach boat and Francesco Bruni. So uh, no shortage of talent in the afterguards, but it's these little changes Compared with teams that are uh, solid afterguard lineups, they all take time to settle in. Yeah, exactly. And I think, in fact, Porto Cervo maybe was their, was their podium finish, if I remember. They finished second there, but they've also gotten almost as deep as, as eighth or ninth in other regattas. So it's, yeah. a, it's a bit like this race course here, a ninth and a first yesterday. That, that's just how their season has been. And uh, it makes sense when you're not consistent with your team to then be not consistent necessarily on, on the race course either. Um, Platoon, of course, hasn't changed. I don't think have they changed anyone on their on their boat during the season. I don't think so. Quantum, we, we could talk about Quantum has had some changes. Of course, they had Bora Galari helming earlier in the season when Doug DeVos missed a couple of regattas. Doug back on the helm now. Bora at points was calling strategy, but then stepped back off when he did the Moth Worlds and Michele Avaldi stepped back into the strategist role. So a little bit of after guard movements there, but uh, the team's so used to sailing together over so many different years, it doesn't seem to affect them as much. It doesn't affect them as much, but for sure we spoke, I spoke with Terry and he was just saying it's just the little subtle nuances of uh, communication. That's what takes the uh, time to just relearn it and real, really feel completely 100% comfortable and be able to kind of second guess, read each other's minds rather than... Well, and, and we could say it doesn't affect them, but they are sitting they're sitting third for this series and I'm sure they would much rather be in the position where they were last year. They had like a 60 point lead going into this regatta, right Andy? That's right. I think it just goes to show credit to this fleet. They, the, at the beginning of this event, there were six or seven teams within that 60 point ability to win this regatta. So comparing last year to this year, it's such, a, such an amazing um, competition now. And, Definitely three teams could take it. It's still very much as anyone's game between Platoon, Quantum, and Azura, but I don't even think that means it's only those three teams. I do think maybe Provetsa, if they had an amazing run and the other three had a horrible one, could still possibly sneak in there. Though as I go in days, it's going to be harder and harder. We'll know at the end of today for sure whether Provetsa still has a shot. But in simple terms, Jenny, it's also been a very long season, uh, even compared with last year. We just raced in Europe last year. We started way back in January in Key West. We've, this is our sixth regatta this season. And it's, uh, as Terry Hutchison's fond of telling us, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And at this stage, I think uh, you're getting towards the end of the marathon and thinking about your sprint uh, into the finish line. And Platoon just have the upper hand just now. 
in this race uh, and uh, we'll be closing the uh, the gap of the Azura have they got themselves up to fifth just now on the uh, virtual eye leaderboard uh, interesting we have Azura out on our side on the right here I think just behind Brennanek um, just a little bit on their weather hip so maybe that means then that they've moved they've made moves over a platoon uh, sorry and gladiator on the far side um, it would make sense again we were saying that the right side was paying on the first up win so it makes sense to have this much leverage for Azura to be making those small games and all it looks like gladiators on the far side are quite close to each other so maybe they've been a little bit too much we'll see we're getting much closer to these top marks so we will know very soon around yeah, certainly, Azura seem to have got themselves uh, to weather and uh, gaining a little bit of gauge there uh, on Brennan Asek, very slightly. Gladiator on the uh, left side, way out, uh, coming in on towards the uh, Port Tatley line. In fact, furthest to the left, or second furthest to the left, along with Prevetsa. Prevetsa furthest to the left, that uh, yellow track, yellowy orange. But I, I can't tell if maybe Quantum has made a little bit of a gain on Platoon here. I definitely think um, whether or not Platoon's got that same distance of actual lead line forward. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like they have that forward boat length gap anymore, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I think you might be right. I just looked at the, the, a couple of shots ago and it seemed like uh, Quantum had got to weather. Uh, Platoon looked very slightly lighter just now. Hobby horsing just slightly in the uh, bouncy chop. Tony Ray called it after were corduroy. That's what he said. He said the waves out there today will be like corduroy. Now, how much did that give you a mental limit? It was amazing. Dear Vera was an American reference when he started speaking exactly. about an American ski resort. But yeah, off beast moguls versus corduroy. Have, I just thought it, I it was I can conclusively awesome say, Jen, that we've never seen corduroy skiing in Scotland. <laughs> have you seen any? <laughs> Absolutely. Plenty of other places, but not really in Scotland. Anyway, platoon do seem to be hanging on uh, quite nicely. Still 40, 45 metres of lead as they come out towards the uh, starboard tat ley line. They have, in fact, just tacked on the starboard ley line there. So we'll see very shortly. Quantum only about two boat lengths away from a cross here. And it looks like Quantum's maybe even putting their bow down. So perhaps Quantum ducking uh, just far enough away, I can't tell. But I think Quantum might have actually just had to do a little duck there. So Platoon, uh, platoon losing what was a good lead, a four boat length lead. But Quantum sailed about a boat length past their line. So either Quantum just thinks they need that much clear air or... Um, they think that Platoon called it a little bit early and is going to be pimping here. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, we're just looking downwind. Uh, our shot seems to show uh, Platoon just a little bit shy on ley line, a little bit tight. Quantum yeah. just put a little bit in the bank. So uh, I'm surprised by that, but I think that's the that's the kind of safe. Oh no, John Kostecki going for attack here. So not the safer call. Um, the that was the wrong call probably to do that early. Yeah, I think just doing the tack, two tacks just to get into the yeah, exactly. put Quantum into Lebo and hopefully bounce them off. Quantum going for a little luff there and I'm sure there will be a flag from and some words from Terry Hutchinson there. But So John Kostecki making that early call on the ley line there. It was defensive against Quantum Racing. It was to force Quantum not to Lebo them if they had the option. So I think they, like us, thought that they had made a big loss there that maybe if they overstood Quantum would come in and Lebo and tack early and and, Quant and would give Quantum the lead. So instead they went, let's go early, let's make sure that Quantum goes behind us. And then if we have to, we'll do that double tack, which they just did. But that double tack is dangerous because there, there can at least be umpires involved. Now, I don't see any flags from that umpire. So maybe there wasn't actually any flagging from Quantum Racing. Maybe it was a clear double tack, but for sure. That gap has closed down drastically. Platoon just now getting their spinnaker out on the pole. The kite head still has not gone up yet. Last time I said they were a little late on the draw. This time I think they're a little late on the draw as well. Um, you can see Quantum actually equaling their time and yet they're a boat length behind. Platoon now just going with the head of their kite up. 
and they still don't have it up and Quantums will be beating them perhaps to the draw and the kite fill. Uh, no, it's, it's almost equal timing there. So that's probably gains to Quantum. It should be gains to Quantum in fact. And a much lower line for Quantum there versus Platoon. So a very good aggressive attacking position for Quantum Racing versus Platoon coming out of that top mark. And of course, those two teams with a massive gap now to third place. It's about 10 boat lengths behind them to the third place position. Pop Rec, Recycledge, just rounding now in third. Uh, and also not a great spinnaker set, but I think, uh, no, apologies, that was a great set. They're, they're full within a boat length of the top mark. So uh, well done to Pop Rec. Just behind them here, two boat lengths spread to Brevetza. I don't quite remember, but I don't think Brevetza was well, Brevetza made a gain from uh, Sixth, sixth or seventh. Yeah, up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so sixth good up to fifth, up guys. to fourth. So, so they, they seem to have got through uh, Brennan and Sec. Yeah, through yeah. Brennan and Sec and Gladiator, who were fourth on the first up win. So good good job, Prevetsa there. Brennan and Sec just rounding in fifth. Gladiator just rounding in sixth. And Azura here going for the attack um, on Gladiator. But actually, they're next to play all their high line. I think maybe it was for, yeah, it's for a jive set. And they have not oh, had, a had a good jive set here. So a, a little bit of some of some errors and some chinks in the armor to Azura. That is a boat handling mistake that we would not expect of that team, whether or not they've been failing well uh, tactically and mechanically until this moment. I, I definitely didn't <laughs> just expect to see that distance misjudged like they did there on the mark. But anyway, Azura there rounding, I think that was uh, six, seven, eight, nine, so that was seventh place rounding behind them, sled and eight. Ron racing here in ninth and Sorcha in 10th. And Azura, of course, the only boat so far that has gone for the drive set. Whether or not it was pretty is one thing, but they are at least getting the leverage to get out to that left-hand side. It's just that we know the left didn't quite work that well last time for Ron racing. But I think a roll of the dice here, you're all the way that far back in the fleet, and, and they want to be winning. These guys want to be winning overall. They want to be winning every race. So they're happy to roll the dice and try to make some gains on the rest of the pack. Just behind them. It is now Ron Racing rounding the offset mark, Sorcha rounding in 10th. And the only other boat to have jived, Sled, who was sitting just behind Azura. So Sled and Azura driving off. The rest of the fleet continuing on starboard. But apologies, Quantum Racing has just gone for the jive again. And that should, should be a And I think when they see Azura jive, they often go to defend kind of the overall series title and to get a split from Platoon. And it looks like they just had long enough to try if they could make their gains a platoon and they did, didn't really make any gains so yeah go for the jibe early and see if you can get some leverage for a shift so in the meantime jen if you're uh, john castecchio on platoon what are you thinking what are you what are you doing down this final run when quantum jibe off well especially as quantum jibe give them distance to go just so you have plenty of clear air behind them as it's getting a little bit lighter throughout the day here you'd rather not be too close to lured of them because if it gets any lighter you then have to sail hotter and sail into their bad air so yeah. at this moment yeah for platoon that's then the question once you've let them go long enough that you're sure you'd have clear air no matter what do you continue all the way into that corner like they did last time because it worked last time and they accelerated what was a boat length lead into a four boat length lead? Or do you jibe early-ish and protect against quantum racing? I think with John Kostecki, we often see him confident in calls. So mm -hmm. I will see John Kostecki continuing like he did last race. And I yeah. think they're so, they're, so nile, they're so dialed in with the trimmers and maybe with well uh, on Boat, that it's not like they're worried about their speed. It's not like they need another boat close to them to make sure that they're staying in check with the speed all the time. So I do think, yeah, and at this point, it looks like they're continuing. So they are hoping to be happy in that corner. And with Quantum Racing so close to them, that is probably the best call as well tactically because when you come back together again, that, and <laughs> I say that here they are going into the drive, but when you come back together again now, Tune will be on port jibe. At <coughs> once Quantum drives back and they make the next color, Quantum will be on starboard. So if Quantum's made any gains, I mean, we know they were right on the stern of Platoon. If Quantum's made any gains, then they'll have a piece of Platoon. So what you want, if you're Platoon, <coughs> is to have that interaction, that cross happen right at the finish line so that they don't have a piece of you, you don't have to take their stern, you can actually just cross the finish line at the pin end if it's the 
favorite end of the line and you keep your first. But otherwise, if that cross happens earlier up the up the race course and, and starboard boat has made that tiny bit, maybe that shorter boat length gain that you're now not crossing them, then you have, you have to do a massive duck or a, a jibe back and hope that you're on their air and you have to fight out of that corner. So I'm expecting where John Kostecki has jived here to be the pen end ley line. I don't know if that's actually the fact, but tactically that would be the thought process I think he's going through. I would think so, yeah. And for sure they have confidence in their downwind speed and this, uh, and this wind strength. Sweet spot, just probably a, a couple of knots uh, more, but uh, as quick downwind as Quantum in general, I think they'll be fairly happy. And it's sort of the, I mean, once, once JK makes that call, it's sort of been on Jordi Califat, the, one of the other medalists of the team, to actually make the ley line call. The navigator is the one that has the instruments, that tells him the angles, that says, in this, in this breeze strength, in this direction, we will be at the ley line here, or five boat lengths, or ten boat lengths. And between the two of them, they're sort of saying, okay, but is it going to stay this direction, or will it be more right? So should we jive early at the ley line, hope we get say a three or five degree header that just soaks us down or maybe will it die a little bit and we'll, we'll be lifted later and in fact I think perhaps they've just been lifted recently I don't know if you guys are seeing that on virtual eye but it does look like the angle of platoon now is a bit higher than the angle of quantum racing so either it's gotten a little bit lighter out there for platoon as they sail up into sort of the bad air of quantum or it's it's a little bit of a lift but it it perhaps is advantage now to quantum Yeah, Quantum just very slightly quicker by about uh, between half a knot and a knot just now. The platoon still have the advantage of about 30 to 40 metres according to Virtual. Oh, it's going to be a nail-biter downwind, I think, Andy. <laughs> It's going to be a nail biter once they get to the finish line or once they get close enough to the finish line. Quantum Racing looks like they are rolling into the drive here. Bodies coming from the leeward side up to the windward side going for it <coughs> and actually maybe less of a nail biter than I was expecting. You're, you're saying 30 to 40 meters and it looks like as they've jibed that that platoon should still have something like that distance. Um, it, it could now get interesting though if Quantum is able to put themselves where they're going to be able to affect platoon's air which is obviously what they should go for. We should see them jibe here and then jibe back on top of platoon. So mm -hmm. the 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 scenario for John Kostecki and for the guys on Platoon for Harm is to decide what angle do you sail towards Quantum so that when they approach their drive, you know that you'll be clear of breeze once they've come out of it. So sometimes you'll often heat up a little bit here, sail a little bit higher, get more speed going at them, then force them into driving early so that they think that they're on your breeze early. And then you can actually head down there and you, and you have clear breeze, uh, what we call clear breeze behind them in sailing. But otherwise, you might sail a bit deep, wait for them to come all the way towards your line and then do the same thing. Once they've jived on you further away, then you heat up and you clear your breeze out in front. And mm -hmm. so it just depends on which way they think the, the finish line is for them here, whether they, uh, Quantum's going for the jive now. Mm -hmm. So we'll just see the response with Platoon, whether Platoon goes bow up a little bit or bow down. But I think Quantum's actually placed a really nice jibe here. Maybe a touch early and Platoon just going for the soak there. So Platoon did go for the heat up and try to keep Breeze behind now by bearing away just a little bit. And I think Quantum did jibe a bit early and now is going to have to soak down a bit onto Platoon's line. But mm -hmm. it does look like a relatively safe spot for for platoon they do have a long a, a long downwind still to go though so if it gets any lighter it is a dangerous spot they will have to heat up and they'll be kind of heating up right into the bad air of quantum racing so nothing is over yet in this race those two boats the two racehorses at the front very much locked into a fight for first and we cannot forget about pop Rec, the blue kite in my eye out on the right hand side they're not quite in contention now <coughs> but they could be if those guys get involved in a driving duel mm. And also Provetza and uh, that trio of boats out on the right. Provetza appear to have got up to third, according to Virtual. But um, we'll see how that plays out. But I mean, ultimately, you know, between Quantum Racing and Platoon, there will be a certain level of satisfaction. I mean, one point, one place, uh, either way, whoever wins. The key thing for Quantum is that uh, this has been a nice, solid race for them, considering what's gone on in the previous race and the one before that. 
the uh, first race of the uh, regatta. They had to fight back. They were ninth or tenth, I think, at the top mark, first time up. And they had to get right back up to, uh, up to fourth place. So that was recovery mode. Uh, and yesterday was uh, a little bit of a disaster. They were leading by so much and then dropped down to that seventh place. So this, uh, you would like to think, was uh, much more a straightforward race. Business uh, as usual, as Terry likes to say, not about uh, hitting out the park, just putting in the uh, good scores consistently <laughs> uh, and uh, to follow Platoon across the, the uh, line in second place will be... Uh, will be really quite useful, particularly with Azura in, in seventh. I think they'll be much happier to be putting points on Azura, both of them, than uh, whether they're first or second, really. Yeah, what does he say? Scoring the runs wins ball games too? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, I think that's for sure. Second place in this suite, you're happy my, with that. My favourite is that some days you're the bug and some days you're the windshield. And then he says, <laughs> and some days you're a bit of both. And that's when he loses me. <laughs> they were definitely the bug yesterday, I think. I mean, going from leading the race to dropping down to seventh, where the day before, as you said, they went from ninth to fourth. So that's, that's going to be a good finish here second. But it is not over yet. We've just dropped back a little bit in terms of our positioning on the, on the motorboat. But it does look like it is still a little bit of a battle between Quantum Racing and Platoon. What do you, guys, what do you see on the, leader boy, on the leader line? It's still pretty close, but I think still the small advantage to... Uh, to platoon by a matter of uh, 70 or 80 metres. And Pat Preck, as you said, have got back at uh, Prevetsa, according to Virtual. Like, if they can get through in third, though they are exa exactly even uh, on their uh, distance to finish. Yeah, to, uh, to us out here, it looks like Pat Preck has a, has a, well, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> is on the far side, so I can't actually see quite their distance. It looked to me like, like Poprek was leading still, but I do think at this point, looking at the finish line, um, Platoon is in a very comfortable position. If Quantum Racing wanted to engage again, they would have had to jibe earlier. If they wanted to then be able to get on Platoon's breeze a last time, a second time, they needed to do it sooner. They're almost both to the ley line on starboard here. So Quantum just now initiating the jibe, but Platoon, yeah, exactly. Platoon simultaneously jibing in front here. So Platoon will have clear breeze and, and not really in con any concerns from Quantum Racing behind as they come down towards the bottom marks. It's only about eight boat lengths to go, maybe 10 boat lengths to go here for Platoon. And in fact, perhaps the only the only concerns now are the far side. So I think it's Prevetsa, as you were saying, who's who's coming in, who's maybe just nipped Poprek. But I think for Platoon, that's that's the final debate is whether whether Prevets is getting a little closer, and I, I don't think they are. I think with only five buildings to go here, Platoon's probably got this one nailed, and they're going to be a very happy team on board. Okay, we're just underneath Platoon now, who is just two and a half boat lengths to the finish line. Going to win their first race of this regatta. You can see John Gostecki all the way at the bottom of the boat. He was at the lured end, just making sure they didn't hit the boat with their <laughs> spinnaker. And, um, and that's it, fighting to the finish there to make sure every boat length comes through. There's the horn. Platoon taking the race and, and making it a much closer overall series. Behind them, Quantum Racing just rolling down. They both overstood a little bit, in fact. So Quantum Racing just really fighting out to that left corner getting into the breeze before driving back, ensuring that they kept that second place over Prevetsa. Quantum Racing just crosses now. We don't get a horn for them. We just get a second place for Quantum Racing. A great race, as we said, for them. It puts them back into contention, and, it, and it'll definitely soothe the nerves and, the, and calm the nerves on board. And I think now Prevetsa and Poprek, this is going to be close. I'm not sure what Virtual says. I think by eye, it's Prevetsa. I think, I think Poprek has actually overstood as well. Prevetsa should be, yeah, should be across by about a boat length, although Poprek is bringing in some breeze, but they're bringing in the breeze just a tiny bit too late. Prevetsa bearing away into the, in, bearing away into jibe even across the line, but Prevetsa is going to get that, and they're only going to get it by about half a boat length there. Poprek just popping in for fourth, but uh, a little bit of disappointment there at the end, but a fourth place finish, I think, is a good, a good finish for Poprek. 
Um, well done to Provetsa, who rounded the first upwind, uh, sixth or seventh, Andy. Just behind them, Brenmanosek Gasrom, the guys who won the race yesterday, pulling in a solid fifth place. They were up to fourth at points in that race, so I'm sure they won't be too happy with fifth, but it is a fifth nonetheless. They have the overall series and regatta leaders, Azura, behind them, and Gladiator behind them. And this, this race is not quite over between those two boats, but I think having to pull one final drive by Gladiator does mean, yeah, Azura getting in here for sixth position. So the Italians just recovering from what was seventh earlier, but not a great recovery for that team. A sixth place is one that we know that they will be disappointed in, and they will be, but as you're will, saying, it will give them the, uh, the circuit lead by just a single point going into the next race. I think 177 plus 6 should take them to 183 uh, and uh, platoon 183 plus 1 should be 184 according to my uh, mental calculations. Well, it makes yeah. it much more exciting for us, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Gladiator cross <laughs> by your mark. <laughs> Seventh and now we've got uh, sled into eight. So sled maybe with the with the second best moves up of the race, Provetsa the first. Sled was last around the top mark and they've they've gotten forward to eighth place. So uh, well done to those guys, at least for keeping fighting there. And then we've got Ron racing here who did of course keep fighting as well, but they just weren't able to pull it off. They're driving here at the finish line to not hit the committee boat, getting ninth and behind them it will be Sorcha in 10th. But I can't believe how close the points are now, Andy. I can't believe it either. It's, uh, and here's a little thing that I just looked very, very quickly. Again, I may be wrong, but I think it has not been since uh, Miami since Platoon won a race. Oh, wow. Okay. So the regatta that they won, I remember that they were so consistent. That's right. They they're they're super consistent, the but, but yeah. winning a race is something relatively rare for a Platoon. And perhaps that does indicate they're pushing the uh, risk-reward equation just a little bit more. Oh, I almost hope they're rewarded for their risk by <laughs> by the win at, the, at this regatta. I mean, it would just be great to see a third a third team on the overall trophy, but I don't think we can start to call that this early. It's only one point between it between them and Azura, and there is, as we've said, a lot of racing left. Three more days of racing, three races, hopefully, in the cards for today. Um, plenty of breeze here still, although maybe not quite as windy as we saw on the first upwind of the first race, but it is absolutely beautiful conditions. Yeah, Platoon were not so good in uh, Porto Cervo, if you remember. They uh, were great at the World Championships and then they went a little bit cold in Porto Cervo. Platoon, they, uh, won the world title by s they won the world title by seven points. And, uh, but for a sixth place, were never off the podium through the whole week. The ten race, uh, ten race series. Puerto Portals. Platoon were fourth, and uh, best score of the week was one second place, a couple of thirds and a couple of fourths. So there you go. Andy, we're going to try to head towards the the coast boat of Quantum Racing. I think we'll give them we'll give them a little bit of time, but we have been told that we could speak with Coach Tommy Burnham. So we'll maybe give them six or seven minutes to, to speak to their team, but then we'll try to get just a couple words from Tom. And I think this is probably the good time to do it because he's going to be a happier coach. Although he actually, he coached my team for a couple of months in our, in our match racing right before our Olympic trials. And he is, to his credit, as steady as can be as a coach. I mean, if you have a great race, he's still steady. If you have a bad race, he's still steady. So in terms of being able to keep them on an even keel, he's, excellent at doing that we know that he did it as well for artemis racing in the america's cup and that that's a team that's in their lifetime very much had had ups and downs this this summer was probably more up san francisco so being more down you know obviously. knowing tommy knowing Burnham. the guys on board quantum as we do and knowing tommy as we do what will his approach be what will he be uh, providing will he just be providing information or will he actually be stepping up with uh, clear advice I think I think with that dynamic, it is probably more just information. I mean, even with us and, and the Olympic team, it was just more information. You like you like to know the wind shifts. You like to know what was working well for the other teams. Um, for for them there, Quantum obviously they got they got ping ponged off the start line. And if you're just joining us, that was that was sort of the 
the problem for them, but, but they could have ended up sixth or seventh like Azura, and instead they just pulled off that ping pong and, and finished up second at the top mark anyway. So I think in terms of his critique of that race, there's not a lot you can critique, so instead it's just more informational about setting up for the next race and, and a little bit just a, um, a mental influence. It's not like he's actually out loud calming them down yeah. but his presence is a very calming exactly um, just person, having them yeah. having him in the corner at this key stage in the regatta or in the uh, in the season i think yeah, it's just uh, as you say a calming influence another uh, familiar respected voice um to keep uh, keep the uh, level of performance up make sure I mean, terry always talks about no stone unturned and that's just uh, another respected voice, uh, another flow of uh, solid, dependable information. Yeah, another another key in the armor. I mean, it's a bit it's a bit like if the, the sailors are the front line, he's sort of the general behind it that makes you feel full of full of your own energy and your own ability to make your own calls and your own decisions. But yeah, he's very much um, a, not a guiding influence, but a calming influence in general. And I think for those guys and, and Terry himself, Terry knows he's got ups and downs and he needs to always be trying to work on that and trying to keep himself not too not too hyped up after any race and not too down after any race and and I think you know here of course they've got a lot of races to go still but a second place is a really good position for them it puts them into into massive fighting for the overalls but platoon is now even more so fighting Indeed. in the overalls and I think so Jenny we're just gonna have to go ahead just seeing the leaderboard for the uh, Menorca 52 Super Series Sailing Week regatta and Platoon take the lead uh, in, that re in the regatta by two points. They've got a 6-2-1 for nine points. Azura then drop to, uh, or on to second place. They uh, shared the overall lead. They're now 1-4-6 uh, for 11 points. Then Gladiator 12th, uh, sorry, on 12 points in third. Quantum up to fourth uh, on 13 points. Prevetsa fifth on 14. Brennan a second, 15. Sled 19. Paprek 21. Uh, Sorsha ran racing and Allegra then with their uh, their DNF. So that's the uh, the regatta standings. Platoon with a little two point lead and Azura in second, Gladiator in third. So it looks like the uh, breeze should hold in quite nicely. Hopefully we'll go back to uh, Jenny just before the start of the next race. A good race then there for the platoon team. Azura hanging on to the overall lead by just uh, one point. In the overall standings, as we move towards the end of the uh, the circuit, towards the end of the uh, 2017, see who's going to win the title. Join us again in a few minutes when we go into the second race of what should be a fantastic three race day.
Welcome back to Menorca for the uh, 52 Super Series. Menorca 52 Super Series sailing week. Uh, we've had one race, race number three of the series. A good win for uh, Platoon just ahead of Quantum Racing across the finish line. And the top of the table for the circuit for the 2017 championship incredibly close just one point in it as we go into the water for race number four of this series breeze seems to be holding up quite nicely we're at one minute and 55 before the uh, start and jenny Tullock, how are the conditions jenny looks okay yeah it looks beautiful still it is as we said it is a lot calmer than yesterday's racing in terms of the sea state there is plenty of breeze though so we are about to start race two probably eight to ten knots out here on the water we just have about a minute 30 seconds to go to the start and i think perhaps we're going to see the fleet lining up similar to the first start of the day wanting maybe the right hand side Knowing that the top three boats in the last race at the windward mark all came from the right, I think we might see an even bigger fight for this right-hand side. Last time it was a question mark whether Platoon would be held out at the committee boat end, and in fact they just nailed the start and then nailed the race, won the race from start to finish. So I think a little bit more of a fight like that, but what we've got right now is Quantum Racing attacking Sled. We're not seeing the same attack between Quantum Racing and Azura that we saw in both of the pre-starts last time. One Minute Gun has just gone. So from from the committee boat end looking down behind me, actually, it's a blue boat, it's Pop Rec. And they were also very close to the committee boat last time. Then uh, Gladiator, Provetza, Bernanasek, Quantum, Sled, Azura, Sorcha, Platoon has moved down the line. And I can't quite see the far two boats at the end, but it looks like Ron racing all the way at the pin. So the question mark, why has Platoon moved down the line? They won the last race from the boat end. I'm not sure what's going on there with John Kostecki. I'm guessing he's got an, a, a reasoning for that, but we've got 20 seconds to go. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, they're just a little, about uh, half a boat length behind uh, Sorsha just now. Don't seem to be lining up with uh, enough speed just now. They're moving forward nicely now but not looking like a very strong start just now from Platoon. Still got five or six seconds to go, Jen. And five seconds to go here. It looks like Poprek is actually going to nail the start at the boat in two, one, gun there. So Poprek with a beautiful start from the from the boat end of the line. They finished fourth in the last race. They were sitting third for quite a long period of time there. Just underneath them, Gladiator, who is doing very well overall with a two, three, five maybe and underneath that quantum racing the first boat to tack out here a very tight tack out and slight duck of Provetza but quantum racing didn't get the start that they wanted four or five boats down from the line they're getting the right hand side though here by tacking out early so might be a better angle in the end and then just further down the line hard for me to see Andy I'm sure you can see it better from the studio on virtual but who's doing well in the middle in the middle, um, Brunanasek not too bad, Allegra not too bad, but it's all pretty even really. Bow forward just now, Brunanasek really. Best of that uh, middle left group as it were. Platoon coming off uh, close to the pin end of the line. Credited with the early lead uh, on, uh, on Virtual. It was really about uh, the uh, positioning up this first beat. Quantum Racing then Terry Hutchison, Michele Avaldi coming out to this right side, getting clear air. Going quite nicely. So it's a two more boats. A lot of the time if the breeze is solid across the course then we know that Quantum like to be able to just get into clear air and just let the boat uh, rumble. Sail at ma max speed. Certainly just yeah, looking, looking how they're set up just now. They're in a nice fast mode. They are definitely getting to rumble here. They probably have a, a four boat length spread to windward. Quantum being the first to have tacked out just on their line though now is Poprek has just pinched off Prevetza. Prevetza having to tack back. I can't quite see the boat above Prevetza, but above them, Gladiator. So Gladiator also had to make a little tack out. And I think that was because, as you said, Brennanisek was just pinching off Gladiator. Brennanisek had a beautiful start. And on the far side, I think a black boat, so possibly Ron Racing. No, sure. Yeah, Ron Racing are just bow forward on, uh, on Prevetza on our picture. A better start this time for Nicholas Zenstrom and the team on the, uh, than Ron Racing coming off the left side of the group. Bow forward on uh, Platoon. We're just starting to see Platoon's bow and Provetza's bow. 
So the question mark there, we were saying just at the start, why did John Kostecki, why did Jordi Calafat, why did the guys on Platoon decide to not fight for that committee boat end anymore? Why did they go for the left? And I think maybe last time it wasn't, last time it wasn't such a high risk up at the top there because there weren't eight boats fighting for the boat yeah, end. I, mean, I think it's a question of the, the density in that area of the start line out. I think they were just looking for a hole they could uh, pop out. And they seem to be doing reasonably well in that little group. We just, before we uh, panned away from them, we just saw their bow coming forward on, uh, on Prevetsa, the, the Virtual has them in ninth just now. Quantum Racing leading according to Virtual just now from Gladiator. I do still like this right-hand side. I mean, it worked out in the last race on both upwinds. Uh, it did not really work out on the downwinds, but that's a bit to be expected. You don't go as far out on the downwinds. But the question is, at what point is the forecast breeze that's going to do this slight 20 degree left shift? At what point in the day is that going to happen? Is it going to be a very gradual, slow left hand shift or is it going to be a steady, uh, uh, sorry, a a steady slow one or a very quick one i think the assumption with a gradient breeze like this is it will be a slow and steady tick to the left and so i think at this point quantum racing should be comfortable with the right hand side they should feel like it's fine as long as there's enough breeze but maybe platoon was just hedging their bets that the right worked last time but at some point the left's going to start paying if the angle goes left and uh, i'm not sure there i think platoon's looking really they've just sailed into more pressure here as well sorry quantum has just sailed into more pressure here as well Definitely a good little breeze uh, puff on the right-hand side, and it almost looks like their bow has come down. In fact, yes, they're going for the tack here. So a righty on the right with pressure should be an even bigger gain here to Quantum Racing. Yeah, looking good as they come out of their tack. Just watching their uh, converging angles with the Gladiator. Gladiator on the top two, top three boats off the start line. Always hard to tell with the uh, long camera angle. The Quantum certainly seemed to be powered up quite nicely. Crossing, well, gladi crossing Gladiator yeah. quite comfortably, really. No, it's 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 that's a camera angle crossing only by about half a oh, boat really? length. Sorry. There. Yeah, we're just <laughs> underneath them here, and it it looked like it might be a big one, and then yeah. really it was a close cross. So I think. I think this could be gains to Gladiator if they go out to the right a bit further and get some more leverage. It looks like this little puff that we have in front of us, that puff that Quantum started to tack in, just continues further out right. And Gladiator's not quite in it yet. They're still in yeah. the in the leftover lefty. So once we see their bow that go down, does we'll see them tack. Sorry, go Jenny, ahead. just looking across the fleet from this uh, high view from the, uh, the drone, looking out to the left, it seems like the left is coming in quite strong, perhaps with that uh, lefty you were talking about. Looking at Bruninasek, Azura and Sled, all now making a gain on Virtual, sailing a slightly higher angle. Right, it looks like Bruninasek should be crossing Quantum quite easily from yeah. here. Ooh, this is a tough one then. So Platoon maybe was calling it right from the, <laughs> from the start, wanting the left, going left early, Quantum Racing maybe not getting the best start on the right, but clearly they wanted the right. They tacked out early after a bad start, and, and it's a tough place to be. Quantum has just tacked back underneath the fleet, but that's sort of the conservative move when you know you're behind. You'd rather not cross behind them all. You'd rather hope for a tiny bit more from the right, and it only depends. If the right comes back a little, Quantum can gain back, but if it's all left from here, this is going to be a big loss for the team that just got second. Correspondingly, nice work from Azura, just now lying second on the water. Very early in this uh, first beat, of course. Ran racing third, sled fourth. We're out here just underneath Gladiator on the, on the right-hand side of the race course, and Quantum Racing just, uh, no, as we said, they tacked up. They tacked back underneath the fleet, and now they have tacked again. So three tacks to Gladiator's none, I think should at least be a loss to Quantum. That's just too many maneuvers in such a short period of time. Um, but it probably means Quantum did see a tiny little bit of a left shift and has now gotten a right shift again. Um, at some point here, I would expect Quantum Racing to get sort of the same righty that, sorry, 
Gladiator to get the same righty that Quantum just did and tack back. But I think as we were talking about Tommy Burnham being the, the calm influence on Quantum Racing as the coach, here, here goes Gladiator, speaking of, here goes Gladiator for the tack. But I think if you're Tom Burnham to digest that after the start, fine. They went the wrong way at the beginning, that right-hand side. But that, those three tacks in the middle, I think that's going to be painful for them. And we should see that, we should see that hurt Quantum Racing. Gladiator has just tacked. They'll have to either concede their losses when they come back to the fleet in the middle or hope that the right side makes a small gain near the top. But they are far out on this right-hand side now. The only other boat out here as well is Prevetsa still on port. Prevetsa is certainly one of the teams that are prepared to push the, uh, push the risk in terms of strategy. We've seen that several times over the course of the season. So between Brunenasek, Sled and Azura out on that left side, according to Virtual. Good wind pressure now. Now, just watching uh, Quantum converging with these uh, boats on the left. You can see uh, Platoon there. And I think in the foreground, uh, Allegra. Interestingly, Prevetsa still coming out to this right-hand side. So, yeah, as you were saying, they're, they're really willing to roll the <laughs> dice here. Peter Holmberg driving Tony, the American Tony Ray, because there's two Tony Rays in this fleet. The American Tony Ray calling tactics, and Nacho Pastigo, who knows these islands well, but maybe not Menorca Bay that well. They are, they are forcing us on the motorboat far out to the right-hand side because they just keep trucking along on port. Now, I do think there is what looks like good pressure out here. I spoke about it earlier. I think they're fighting for it because they, they seem to be quite deep. I mean, they're even just behind Gladiator, they were multiple boat lengths behind Gladiator. So they're sort of rolling the dice early and hoping for something. But it looks kind of like Gladiator just maybe made some gains on the fleet. Do you see that, Andy, on virtual? Yeah, a little bit. We're just watching Prevetsa rolling into their tack. Yeah, the I think guys they're maybe all feeling they're up. getting some right shift. Certainly enough pressure there, just looking at the way they powered up coming out of the uh, out of the tack. Yeah, they're just on the edge of this little right, what looks like a tiny bit more right pressure. And it's, and it's deceiving as well, because the right pressure I keep talking about, we do have a strange not a strange, but we have the angle of the sun just right here, mm -hmm. upwind of us. So it's a really hard spot where you see all the glitteries. And when you look out to the left, there's, there's no sunlight, so it's not quite the same. So perhaps what I'm seeing as puff is a little bit of, of sun influence, but it does feel like this should be a tiny bit of right puff and right shift. And I think maybe not for Prevetsa because they were so far behind, but mm -hmm. maybe it should be slight gains to Gladiator, um, at least to the middle of the fleet. I think Prenenasek still has it nailed to be leading this race at this moment. Still plenty of distance to the top marks as well, Andy. We probably have a, almost a third of the leg still to go. It feels like maybe the breeze is down just a little bit, but the race course is still the same length. So it's just slightly longer than the last race took. And it looks like now, yes, Gladiator coming across. Brennanisek still did have the lead. So Brennanisek leading across on port means Gladiator then tacked underneath the conservative move. You know you're going to either cross behind or maybe take a bit more leverage. So Gladiator going for the tack out to the right. Ed Baird rounded the top mark in fourth in the last race, winning from the left. So he switched positions now. He started much closer to the boat end and has been winning the right-hand side and is probably sitting second overall. Brennanisek, right, who yeah. won from the left, is, is really looks like they have a handy lead now. A very close, maybe very last-minute duck there on... Um, uh, it's sled on starboard tack, Andy, but the boat who just ducked sled, was that Azura? I think it was Azura, yeah. 
it's, it's funny. It looked so so deep and so last yeah. minute that I think maybe they thought they were they were crossing for a second and instead they went for the duck. But it, they're just going to be able to hold off Sorcha, I think, underneath them. But otherwise, that'll be a mistake if Sorcha is able to then pinch them off. And Sled then rolled into the tack afterwards. So that's a little three boat lineup out there. Um, just below them, those three boats is as Quantum Racing in the middle, and then just our side of that three boat lineup is is Gladiator again. And Gladiator coming out for one more right hand final, hopefully final puff that allows them to get onto starboard and stay in second place. But Brennanasek instead, not on the ley line, is going for one more consolidating tack. And in fact, Gladiator just follows that consolidating tack. So they must have both gotten a tiny bit of variety here. They're happy to take it, cross the fleet in the middle while they can, and then come back one more time later on with the ley line. It makes it much easier for the ley line call. They're a tiny bit too far out now to feel confident in calling the ley line this far. And so both of those boats making a good move there, just, just protecting it against the fleet while they can. Now Quantum Racing in the middle of the fleet, also tacking back. So I think again, that is another little right shift that Gladiator and Brennanasek took. And Quantum at this point is trying to take every single shift. So I they're taking that starboard shift and then they're sailing towards the two boats above them. It's gonna be a hard spot to choose where to go back, Andy. Yeah, I think they're also just trying to keep a little bit of a cover on uh, Platoon and Azura to a certain extent. keep them behind them coming up to the uh, the windward mark then that's half the uh, half the job done or maybe it's the the first quarter of the job done <laughs> yeah i mean the, fir the first the, their battle the first just leg. now is to try and put points on the board against the rivals as much as uh, getting around so the top I, mark and uh, you know top three top four that was a duck just there i think it was ron racing just ducking quantum Racing there. I, I see a uh, dark hull and dark sails, bow number three. So, yeah, Ron Racing just went for the duck. And Sled now just going for the duck on Quantum as well. I think Poprek is going to cross cleanly behind Quantum. So, interesting here whether Quantum can then pull off two really nice tacks and still lead Sled and Ron, or whether having those guys duck them here is going to come back to bite them when they come onto the ley line. But for Nenesek, very comfortably into first position here. They will do two more attacks to the top mark, but I don't think there's going to be anyone fighting for Nenesek. Quantum Racing has a big choice what to do here, whether they come in on Fort Tack, hope for the best against Sled and Ron. And as Sled, Ron, and Sorcha all head up towards the starboard ley line, um, the question is whether Gladiator crosses them cleanly. And I think it looks like they are at the yeah. current moment that Gladiator's across. Yeah, just behind Gladiator. Who's that, Andy? Yeah, Sorcha, I think it is. Oh, I think it might be Azura yeah, well, on sorry, starboard. Uh, Azura on starboard coming in. They may have come right out to starboard to that ley line early. We'll take that into the mark. And Sorsha just, uh, I think, beside them. Oh, it's going to make for a very tight spot for Quantum back in tacking into. We know Ron, and Ron Race led just ducked. Quantum about five, 10 boat lengths ago. So now Quantum's coming back in with those three three boats in front of Sled and Ron Racing. Um, and I don't think they're definitely not crossing, they're definitely not crossing Gladiator. So they're can tack in there in front of Azura. I think they can, in fact. I think it looks like they're just pull that off behind Gladiator and in front of the rest of the pack. So it is Brennanasek cleanly around the front mark here. The blue who I think just got fourth or fifth in the last race, who won yesterday's race coming from deep on the final downwind. Brennanasek with almost a four boat length advantage. And then it is almost the rest of the pack behind them, just boat after boat after boat. Quantum Racing in the red shirts, Gladiator in the red shirts is the second boat there. Quantum Racing with the psychedelic sails in third. Just behind Quantum Racing in fourth place, I believe is Sled. Sled. And it's Brennanasek Gazprom just rounding the, the offset mark here. Really nice before they've even rounded like that was a beauty that makes my heart happy right there but behind them as you can see the the pack is 
Gladiator, Quantum, Sled, Ron, Boat doing circles in the very back. I can't see who that is yet, but Sorcha just behind Ron Racing. That's behind Allegra. Ah, sorry. Uh, uh, Azura uh, just Allegra behind Ron Jones, Racing. Yeah. Okay, Az Allegra, Azura just behind Ron Racing. Um, Sorcha just behind Azura. It's really tight, tight in there. Platoon as well, Provetza. And Allegra, as you said, doing turns in the back. A very tough day for Allegra, who had to skip the first race because of jib problems. Um, I'm not sure what you guys are seeing now, Andy, but the first half of the fleet is around Kites Up. Beautiful set. Yeah. And I think the majority of them now making me happy with their set. So maybe the breeze just a tiny bit lighter here, allowing them to get their kites up that, that one boat length earlier. That means that the kite has been drawing while they're while their stern end is still near the offset mark. And perhaps it's a tiny bit lower offset mark as well, so they can actually go for the set and not worry about not worry about ripping the or hitting the kite on the offset mark. But the problem here, platoon, very, very deep in the path. If Allegra is eleventh, that means Pop Rec is tenth, Provetza is ninth, and Platoon is eighth. So for a for a boat that just won the last race in such style, um, the left hand side really didn't seem to pay for Platoon. Yeah, but I think you called it off the start line. It just um, they were late coming into the line. Really, they found they were looking for a hole and they found it, but they just couldn't get the uh, pace to get off the line and get the bows in front. Yeah, ultimately, Brennanisek actually did start down near the pin and, and they are leading. So it wasn't about the left side not working. It was about not having a good start. And I think that's fair enough. Platoon, Platoon isn't always the best starter. So we should expect to see them pick through the pack a little bit, just like we expected Azura to pick through the pack last race. Let's see if they can do a better job than Azura did. Azura only moved from seventh to sixth. Platoon here is in eighth, but that is such a tight group in front of them. I mean, from eighth all the way up to to third place, maybe even second place is only probably eight boat lengths. So a really, really tight battle and no one has jived, which makes you think it's a bit more of a lefty than the last race. The right side hasn't really paid as well. Everyone's gonna go out to that left side and that makes that bottom corner, that jibe area, very confusing. Actually, the first boat to jibe here, platoon. Interesting, but really a good beat from uh, Quantum, considering where they went off the start line. As you say, the uh, the left being pretty strong all in all. Quantum, uh, one of the first to tack out to the right and still came around the top mark in third. The top third of their beat was, was pretty good. Yeah, surprisingly, the top, the top third, the right... Well, I mean, Gladiator had been far enough behind, uh, I guess not really that far behind, but behind Quantum Racing enough that it, they ended up paying a little bit out on the right-hand side, but Brennanisek obviously, I mean a huge gap. What's the what's the limit for Brennanisek here, Andy? I think it's about 120 meters or something like that. So probably we ever saw the first race. Yeah, for sure. Surprisingly, Platoon still the only boat to have jived out good for them to have drive they were in the pack and they want to make some gains but they've got to really hope that their boat speed is good enough for them to actually make those gains we saw the drive sets weren't really working last downwind but every time they sail downwind they seem to extend their lead so they might just be fast. it might be that fast enough they can make the drive set work just because they have for sure clear air from the rest of the pack and then they can use speed to their advantage but Interestingly, if you can see Platoon right now, they have their bowman out on the pole. He's he's just come back, but I think they'd probably lost their sheet over the bow, so they weren't able to drive until he did it. And he's heading back towards the middle of the boat. The rest of the pack still continuing on starboard. Nobody even looks to be initiating a jibe yet. Um, Prenanasek pretty cleanly ahead, probably eight boat lengths ahead. And then the rest of the fleet, each boat leading the boat behind has pulled out about half a boat length to a boat length of lead. The, the biggest gap that's happened between the top mark is now is between Quantum Racing and the boat that's in fourth. So Quantum and Gladiator pulling out a little bit from the pack behind. 
Um, but everyone just sort of giving themselves clear the ability to move around. Plenty of time until the chai because it's a very big, not a very big, but a long enough left shift that it's a long starboard downwind. I guess the question there, Andy, does it look like Platoon's made any gains so far on virtual, or is this a loss? Because it does still feel mm. like it's a, a shift to the left instead of a instead of anything that would help them on port. Nothing, nothing terribly uh, exciting, really. Still lying an eighth. So it'll be all about it's just choosing good. the bottom mark angle yeah. and hoping you can get those four boats right at the end, something like that. So much concentration it takes in this light air for these guys. The waves are a bit, a bit bigger and the breeze a bit lighter than it was earlier. Provetza has, uh, sorry, Platoon has just jived back. And finally, the first boat from the far right has jived, but it's Allegre, the boat who already had to do turns and was lying at the back of the pack anyway. So we'll see how Platoon comes back against them, but it won't give us that good a gauge on the rest of the pack. If Platoon has good enough maneuvers, though, those two jibes will outweigh the amount of bad air that they would have had in the entire fleet of eight boats. And also, just the umbrella effect. When there's, when there's a fleet that, that is that big, the breeze sort of goes around and over the fleet. And so you'd rather be a lone wolf on the far side and have the breeze just skimming along the water and push your boat forward than be someone in a pack of, of eight or ten boats like that because the breeze kind of wants to go up and around. And I think maybe they're thinking that that's a good move for Platoon, especially because no one else came with them. So it's not like the first race where the whole fleet jibed anyway and the umbrella effect happens with everyone. The rest of the fleet still on starboard except the blue kite at the back. So I think Poprek is the third boat here to jibe. Essentially, all, all of the boats in the back of the pack are the ones driving out early, rolling the dice early, and everyone else probably still sitting on what was that little bit of a left shift, waiting for, waiting for a righty or a, or a lift to take them back towards the marks. Yeah, no obvious signs of any gain to platoon for sure coming down this uh, down this run. But credit to them for trying, of course. As you say, there's not uh, really any advantage in just coming down with the pack. The front two boats just jived. So Gladiator led and Brennanisek pretty much simultaneously jived in front. Um, the red kite and the blue boat. And Quantum Racing is then just jibing just to leeward of Gladiator's line. And, and it's the domino effect. The three boats behind Quantum Racing now all jibing. And the two boats behind that now jibing as well. So the fleet, a little bit like sheep on this downwind. They're all, they all stayed on starboard the entire time until this ley line. And then they basically have all decided their ley line region. And that's the area. There's one boat. I can't see it from here. Andy, I'm going to guess it's Provetza. There's one boat maintaining on starboard jibe there who hasn't jibed back, but all the rest coming this way. Yeah, that is Provetza. Went round the top mark in 10th uh, place. Well, I like it. They're going a bit further towards Brennanisex line, a bit higher angle coming back, but at least then they're either going to ensure they don't need to jibe at the bottom mark and they could just left turn and head up that right-hand side of the course, or they're making sure they have clear breeze. But um, in the middle of the pack, I think Sled has just jibed back again. They had bad air behind them from three boats behind them, Sorcha, Ron, and a uh, boat between Sorcha and Ron. And so Sled's just jibed back as well. And it finally looks like Prevetza's coming in from, from the far side. But now just behind me, two boats crossing here, and. I think maybe it's platoon. Did they make gains or are they still sitting in eighth? Still sitting in eighth, unfortunately. So what's your guesses on the overall scores here, mm. Andy, after this? <laughs> For Nenesek? 
Mm. Yeah, Quantum Racing just uh, chipping away at the uh, top of the table overall for the season now. So we've just heard from Maria Treo, the principal race officer, that the top mark has shifted five degrees to the left. Sorry, 10 degrees to the left. The new bearing now 185. The previous bearing was 175. So this is the lefty that we saw on the downwind. That is the reason why they were all on starboard for such a long part of this downwind. Um, it's perhaps why the left worked as well as it did for Brennanisek as well as a good start. Uh, but we'll see the next up one should be slightly more centered. So, so perhaps the boats know now that they can either go either way and it should be evened up, that the right side will be opened up again. Brennanasek really looks to have opened up their lead here. They mm -hmm. are probably a, yeah, 10 or 12 boat lengths ahead of Gladiator now and Gladiator chasing, being chased hard by Quantum Racing. And then I think the two of them have opened up still a little bit of a gap to the fourth place boat. I can't actually even see right now who the fourth place boat is, Andy. Fourth place boat is still Sled, and then uh, Ran Racing Azura. Really not too much happening in terms of place changing as you might imagine in this uh, Nose to tail line up. Only really Paprek, uh, Allegra, and uh, Platoon having jibed away. We've got Brennanisek just coming into the bottom mark here. And for holding such a lead, they are holding the Spinnaker very to the last minute. Spinnaker coming down now as their bow touches the mark. And what a beautiful drop that was as well. A, a complete drop by the time their kites around and they're starting to head up when they're, they're sorted. So really well done. And I said the same about their, their kite set. It was gorgeous. So an excellent job by this winning team. They're clearly fired up out here right now. And, and they have the lead to prove it. Now it's not, I thought at some point on that downwind that it was 10 boat lengths. It's not 10 boat lengths. It's probably about four and a half, five here to Gladiator in second place, but a great, a great lead nonetheless. And you can see Simon Dobney was working hard there on the jib trim. Now behind them, Gladiator, red shirts rolling around the bottom mark. Tony Langley, the owner and driver's got his Spanish bandana on and his lean to his neck. He does always like to sort of lean and stare and I think he's staring at those numbers very hard, but he's, he's giving his neck a hard workout as well. Just behind him, <coughs> Doug DeVos, Quantum Racing, rounding. Gladiators pulled out about a boat length and a half on Quantum, and then about the same distance behind to sled. Now, Quantum doesn't seem so stressed about getting their weight out on the side. You can see Terry holding the boom there, um, just hanging out. So maybe it's a little bit lighter than it was last race. Uh, Gladiators actually tacked off. Uh, so has Ron Racing just at the mark. And Ron Racing's made quite a quite a early tack there, having to forfeit some bad air of Poprec and Sorcha uh, for having tacked so early. But they want to be headed towards that left-hand side. Just behind them, Azura rounded this right-hand side as well. Azura not having tacked. Everyone else actually has tacked at this point in time. Everyone on the upwind has tacked. So Azura is going to have to make the choice now whether to tack early here or head all the way out to the right past all the bad air of these boats. Out on the left, the first boat to round the left-hand side is around. Um, equal tied with Poprec on this side, but on the far side it was Sled. So I think a little bit of a drop there right at the end for Sled. Then this side is Sorcha. This side is Platoon. Far side is Prevetza and Allegre. So uh, Platoon actually making a l losing a point there from, from eighth to ninth. Uh, an unfortunate downwind for Platoon. But again, the fleet's so very close here. They've got a lot of distance that they could make gains here on the subwind.
So just looking at the platoon there, looking at the harm ruler spear, trimmer, uh, main sheet trimmer, Dirk de Ridder, and they're on the, uh, with hands on the uh, runner winch, Jordi Califat. John Kostecki there with the uh, wide brimmed hat and the glasses. And they rolled into attack there, I think, for sure, because they were in bad air. I mean, you saw them send some body weight to Leward. They had Sorcha just on their line above them. They didn't have the best rounding, and uh, so they rounded a little bit wide, and they weren't able to stay high of Sorcha. Whether or not there was also a right shift for them to tack on, I'm not sure. They does did it, also just have... Just look at them coming out of the tack, Jen. Doesn't look like a right shift. I think it was bad air yeah. coming yeah, bad out air of the deep. tack relatively slowly. I think that's quite expensive. Seriously Above them, it. though, they've got Paprek and, and Azura both tacked as well. So now the only boat really headed out to this port hand, uh, this right-hand side on port is, is Sorcha. Prevetsa as well in the middle of the pack is also on port, so we'll be taking the sterns of, of Paprek and Azura. But I think the majority of the fleet, I think, is starting to think that the left-hand side is going to be the paying side, um, which is interesting. I'm not sure if I, if I absolutely believe that or if it was just one left shift early on that first up one that allowed the guys on the left to get into the lead. But it still looks like there's solid breed, breeze top right. Um, mm -hmm. Again, the, the explanation of the sun maybe being a defiance against that breeze, maybe just making it look like it's breeze. But it, it really does look like if they if they all went about 20 more boat lengths to this right-hand side, they'd hitch into a little righty that they yeah. could then take back I mean, across. I think in some respects, uh, the kind of geography is not dissimilar to Palma, where you have the gradient wrapping around the... Uh, the coast to the left, and you have the sea breeze or the thermal breeze coming in more from the right, and you still end up with uh, two different breezes. Yeah, and then you have to just be—you have to be confident in your side. It's sort yeah. of the middle is the part that's the middle's the worst. The middle's no man land, and you either you either go hard left or you go hard right, and you'll be top three, and you'll win your side. You'll be third if your side was the wrong side, but at least you'll be top three. And I think. What we see is the, is the middle doesn't really pay for these guys, unfortunately. Prevetsa here coming, as I've just said, across the middle, but switching sides to go out to the right. And I'm, I'm happy with their lineup. I do think, oh no, okay. I was gonna say, I do think Brennanisek has a huge lefty out there, but they were just rolling into attack, so. It looked like they weren't quite lifted. Um, they're tacking onto what looks like a good right shift for Quantum behind them. A good right shift for just behind Quantum, I think, is um, Ron Racing still and, and Gladiator. But perhaps if Provetsa gets a little bit of distance out here to the right, they'll be able to make some gains. I don't see Platoon anywhere in my eye, Andy. Where have they headed? They're just uh, kind of middle right just now. Just uh, behind Allegra, or just crossing behind Allegra. In the meantime, just very much in the traffic with not too many options. They're heading out uh, on, or coming in on starboard. Just crossing uh, Allegra's line. So things not going so well for uh, Platoon, who had just taken the regatta lead and close d distance uh, on Azura down to just one point, I think going in, or two points in fact going into this race. 182 versus 184, Quantum and 192. We're just watching there on Provetsa with uh, Chris Hosking, the main trimmer. I was just watching that as well. He was calling for the ease of the runner for a little bit and then right after that, calling for it to be trimmed back on. So they, they sailed through kind of the last of that lull and then into this uh, this right-hand side puff. And it was beautiful just to see. I, I thought at first he was talking to Peter, but then you could see he was speak, he's speaking with the runner guy behind him there. But again, Prevetsa, they're, they're deep in the pack, or they were deep in the pack around the bottom marks, but they've got plenty of gauge here. So if the right does work out and pay off, they could make some big moves in this race. Which they need to do. I don't think you have to tell Peter Holmberg that twice. Mm. <laughs> it looks like they're setting up for attack now on board Provetsa. 
Tony Ray. It's like the tactician hat, that circular hat, isn't it? It's John is, Kostecki it? rocks it. Tony Ray rocks it. At least that's the American tactician hat. Although maybe Terry Hutchinson's not rocking one, so he sits out. He's got his quantum racing hat on instead. But quantum, it still looks like sitting second across the course from us. I think Brennanasek maybe even continuing to pull away from quantum racing there. And then Azura just coming back towards our side here on the right. Azura on port tack will be crossing Prevetsa. Um, maybe has moved up the pack a little bit here, Andy? Mm, it's very close with uh, Run Racing, but Run Racing would be their next, uh, next target, as it were. Still lying sixth, according to Virtual. Gladiator getting out to the left. Better race though for uh, Nicholas Enstrom and the team on uh, Ran Racing. Yeah, better race for Ran Racing, a, a much worse race for Platoon here. We are um, out on this right-hand side and we're stuck out here by Platoon, the boat who is always the furthest out to the corner is the one that pushes the TV boat out the farthest and then you kind of have to wait for them to tack and at this point that's that's us with platoon at the moment and yet they're setting up for the tack now um, I don't think they're really in a good position here I mean Prevetsa yes at least Prevetsa looks like if it was a chessboard they look like they could be making some gains maybe their their castle is fighting someone else's knight, but Platoon mm. is just far <laughs> enough back that if there was any sort of right shift they still don't really make that massive adjustment on the front of the pack. Yeah. The, only, the only guys they could probably pack, pass are sort of the last three boats anyway. Certainly uh, they have just one boat between them and Azura just now, that's uh, Sorsha. They're within uh, 10 or 15 meters of them. Oh, funny, because on the water it looks so very much like Azura's part of that front pack, the front sort of five boats, one, yeah, five boats. Brennanasek, Quantum, far from it, Gladiator, yeah. Go ahead. They're not far from that, that group at all, really, in terms of distance. They're now uh, sixth. Azura is, or Platoon is? No, Azura are, yeah. Yeah, okay. In fact, maybe Azura is making slight moves on Prevetsa here. Well, they're sailing very different, very different angles. Prevetsa is in a high mode, perhaps in a right shift, but otherwise just a high mode. And Azura has definitely got the pedal down and is, and is sailing lower. So whether that's Prevetsa just tucked into a little bit of a righty and a little bit of a puff, or whether they're actually in two different modes, that's the question, I guess. That's going to be who, who makes the gain out of those two. But Brennanasek really looks to be firing on all cylinders. I mean, every time I look at them, it looks like they've made a bigger game from the previous time. I'm not sure if that's actually what you're seeing on the virtual. Yeah, a bit of a gain to prevent, so for sure, getting up to um, sixth just now on the leaderboard. That may also work for Platoon out in that right side, although Platoon appear to have dropped just now. Prevetsa just crossing behind uh, Azura, just seeing that on the water now. They're live images. We're in race number four of the uh, Menorca 52 Super Series Sailing Week. And it's definitely gotten lighter out here, Andy, from the first yeah. race to, to now. It is much more, p but uh, people are still hiking, but they're not fully extended. They're not max hike all the time. The, the sales are eased a bit more. The runners are off. The seems I think like, there's, seems go like ahead. Quantum may have got through uh, Gladiator, possibly, according to, according to Virtual. Just have a look oh, at that exciting. now. Exciting. Yeah. Two second places would be a good start to a day for Quantum, for yeah. any team, in fact. That's a great start to the day. Yeah, it does look like that to our eye as well. I can't see how high to windward Gladiator would be, but it does look like Quantum loses Gladiator. We are sitting just underneath Azura now, and there, Jib Trimmer. Ah, uh, okay. 
He was down to lure, but he was just giving the jib a tiny bit of ease, and now he's back to weather again. A little bit of a puff, in fact. He might go to hiking out soon. No, they're going to go to tacking soon. So I think every puff that, that we see out here, and granted, we've been on the right-hand side all day, but every puff that we've seen has been a righty. I mean, the teams often get into it. It's a puff and a header, and they tack. Yeah. And sometimes I think they're maybe tacking shy, like they sail back out of it a little bit. So the Prevetsa made some good gains earlier, actually, by, by extending so far to the right from the from the puff, but they sort of were the only ones to get into that puff, into that puff earlier on, whereas I think now Azura definitely is, and it's just whether or not they'll make big gains against uh, Prevetsa and Quantum Racing ahead. Yeah, they certainly look quite good, just quite high and reasonably powered up. As they come out of their tack, maybe a little bit of a righty for them. And we know earlier they were sailing, I think they were sailing a lot underneath Prevetsa, and I was saying that Zura had a much lower line and Prevetsa a much higher line. So I do think, yeah, these are little right shifts in the corner. Whoever's the furthest right, right boat just yeah, seems Prevetsa. to have the best angle. Prevets appear to be up to fourth, considering the, uh, they were so far behind at the, uh, the bottom third of this beat. And Azura also now up in fifth, Ran Racing sixth, Allegra seventh. But uh, this leg is far from over. That's Ron racing there, just checking underneath Azura's line. I think that's probably the loss then is to Ron. They were on the last right? And he's now back on into the next So Azura do seem to be making a bit of a gain on that right side by looking upwind. Someone we saw from uh, Prevetsa a few minutes ago. Still no mistaking the uh, race leader, but Berninasek have led since the top turn first time round. It's Berninasek Gladiator Quantum Sled ran at the first mark. So our uh, shot there just seeing uh, quite a nicely powered up Berninasek coming into the uh, to mark number three, the second. Windward mark. Yeah, we just nipped up the course to this offset mark, and Brennanisek has just absolutely extended their lead. I mean, at the bottom mark, it was about four boat lengths. I think at this point, it is easily about 10, maybe more to, to Quantum Racing. So really well done to the blue boat here. Brennanisek firing on all cylinders after that start to, to have a commanding and what will be a second race they are actually able to to finish this race all the way through the finish line but really really well done to these guys and i think i'd love to see another beautiful set by them i know the last set made me so happy they had their kite up before they even were like <laughs> midway past the offset are you mark, coaching them it, are you no it doesn't look <laughs> like pulling it off like they did last time um they can't hear me don't worry i talk quietly into the mic yeah uh, no the kite the kite's a little bit uh well you know it's still up it's just not full yeah. um but they're not quite as stressed as they were last time they but they have a good lead, don't they? Now. Yeah, beautiful lead. Quantum Racing then in second place. Quantum Racing will have to tack around that top mark, and you can tell they came in from the left. They're, they're super actually overstood on that port tack. Tacking now behind Quantum Racing is where it gets interesting, but Quantum, in fact, has opened up a lead of about uh, maybe five or six boat links themselves to the fleet behind. Um, passing Gladiator, who maintains that third position, but they will do it very closely with the Lee bow over Azura. Um, Quantum Racing not even really looking stressed about their kite yet, just the bowman moving there and of course the pitman probably tailing the bow. Behind Quantum Gladiator tacking into the top mark, actually not as close with Azura as I thought. They've got a clean tack across, about half a boat length to a boat length in front of Azura. Azura, the Italians, having a much better race here with a fourth position than, than what they were last time. I think they finished last race in sixth. 
And behind Zura, it's unfortunately a, l a little bit difficult for me to see, actually, Andy. I see Ron racing, but there's a boat between Azura and Ron. Provetza. Provetza with the great upwind, yeah. using that right side early, and then maybe could have gone out one more time. If they had, they might have even been ahead of Azura and Gladiator. But yeah, Provetza at least going from seventh to now fifth position. So that's Gladiator coming around in third, Azura coming around in fourth, Provetza rounding fourth. in fifth, yeah. and the Swedish boat, Ron racing in sixth for the Swedes, unfortunately. Third and seventh, I think? Uh, I think it's Allegra rounding seventh Allegra, there. Allegra, yeah. Yeah, which is great. They're making some big gains. They rounded the last mark last after having spun. So somewhere in there, we I, I missed it, but maybe on the downwind or just that last up when they, they made it behind Allegra. Platoon wasn't quite able to pull off any sort of comeback, really. And behind, behind Platoon is Sled, then Sorcha, and then Poprek. Um, but quite a close battle there at the, at the top four, at the back four boats. So I think they should be able to lead from the three boats behind, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to make the gains ahead that they'd like to. In front, the, the first eight boats, the first seven boats around, all with kites up, all straight sets, no one with a jibe. I think maybe we'll see platoon jibe set again, but it didn't work out for them really last time. It's just about they're there, patient and sail straight and hope that their speed works. And yeah, that's what they're going for this time. No jibe set for platoon. Behind, we've got still sled rounding, Sorcha and Poprek, but in everyone, seven, eight boats all on starboard. Now the breeze, it did go 10 degrees left already. Uh, sorry, on the first up wind. But now we've got Brennanosek has jive, so yeah, they've squared it up a little bit, and it is a much earlier jive on this downwind. Brennanosek, the lead boat, has jived, and also I think that's a safer move. Just get towards the middle while you can. When you have a big lead like that, there's no reason to go all the way out into the corner, and um, they should feel handy there. Unfortunately, the guys in the very back of the pack uh, twist in their height. Poprek just getting the twist out. It wasn't such a bad twist, only about a boat length. But we've got Brennanosek in the front, the blue boat, leading by a lot. And Azura, the second boat to drive, and just in front of Azura, Quantum Racing rolling into the drive, trying to keep their breeze clear in front of Azura. I think they, they should be able to here. Um, in fact, that actually looks like a really good placement of their drive for Quantum Racing. Uh, we see that often. They often go for that drive the second that Quantum is... Sorry, the second that Azura has drive behind them, no matter how far back Azura has. This time a little bit closer than the last race was, at least. So that lead for Brunasek, uh, really comfortable then. Should be putting their second uh, race win uh, on the board. In fact, winning two from three starts, a really uh, strong record for uh, Francesco Bruni and Morgan Larson. Yeah, so I've extended even from this downwind from what was a 10 or 12 boat length lead to maybe even a 15 boat length lead here. I don't know how they punched out so well over Quantum, but really well done to those guys. And I'm sure a really nice welcome back for Francesco to the fleet. That's right. But in the sa same time, Quantum really have extended away from Gladiator by about the same distance, about 200, uh, 180, 200 meters. So the leader's starting to stretch their legs. Azura seems to be going quite nicely down that left side looking downwind, just looking at yeah. the, uh, the drone shot. Yeah, I think Gladiator is a, a vulnerable to Azura. They, um, they jived in kind of a position that Azura and Ron Racing could be affecting their breeze. If it gets any lighter, they will definitely be affecting their breeze, and I'm not quite sure why Ed Baird or why the team positioned themselves there. I think 
I think it's a dangerous spot. They might be able to pull it off, but it definitely looks like it opens an opportunity for Azura. It is much lighter now on this downwind. You can see a lot of the fleet has more bodies to lure their bodies forward. Last time they were still sailing sort of almost all the bodies on the high side this time. Very much more about finesse, about cat-like movements on board. I'm not sure who you guys are seeing now, Andy, but we're seeing Azura maybe is about to roll into a drive. Yeah, they've mm. everyone coming to the high side here. So perhaps they're trying to consolidate over Ron. I don't think this is the time to attack Gladiator, but if they have the ability to, that might be it to try to get onto Gladiator's air here. They were just a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker. A nice puff, I think, for a few minutes before they roll into that jibe, and will converge with the gladiator. Uh, and no surprise, the the jibe in front from Quantum Racing instantly after <laughs> after Azura. So Ron Racing there, jibing in front of Azura. So Ron actually has a piece of Azura's of Azura's um, breeze here. I, I can't remember who, who led that around, but I thought Azura was leading Ron Racing they around the top mark. Yet. So yeah, a little bit of a swap here at least. Ron Racing might be higher to weather, but they're definitely affecting the, the spinnaker of Azura. You can see Azura's whiskers on their kite as, as Ron gives them bad air. So um, what looked like a, a healthy position for Azura over Gladiator has now become unhealthy with them and and Ron and instead I think Gladiator's going to reap the benefits. Interesting also Prevets are making a, a bit of a gain I think. Yeah the far side they look good they have a better a better angle as well a definite header compared to what Gladiator's sailing there so they've got what is a little bit of a of a righty on the left hand side of the race course yeah. or they're just sailing sailing deeper but I think Probably it was the bad air of Azura and Ron that was making Gladiator sail higher. And just having clear air allows Prevetsa to sail a bit deeper and I'm sure make a big gain. They maybe have even, have they passed those two boats? Not quite. Making it much closer though. So it's going to be a close finish between, uh, say, between third and uh, sixth or seventh. Not sure there's much that Platoon can do from uh, from where they are, coming in from the uh, left, looking downwind. Oh, it's so interesting because when, when they rounded that top mark the first time, we said, yeah, from eighth to third was so tight that I thought they'd be able to make it through. And, and Platoon's been really good at doing that, at move, making those moves and picking one person off here and there. And they just haven't been able to pull it off here. The fleet has stayed really tight in front of them, but Platoon hasn't maximized their opportunities the way that they normally do. They've They've sort of not read the race course as well as they should have here. And instead, it's been Prevetsa that's been maximizing every opportunity there and moving from what was, I think, sort of seventh up to up to third or fourth here. That's right. And you also have to reflect that uh, there you go with uh, Platoon, as I said, winning the uh, their first race since Miami and then coming away with an eighth. Certainly not, uh, not a consistent scoreline today. It's like they forgot about their risk strategy and they mm. went back to kind of the midline, mid-level, yeah. low risk strategy and it's just not paying. I think if it's not a very shifty race course, that is a really tough strategy to have. Yeah. And the World Championships that they won was quite a shifty venue. And so was, they were able it? to... It wasn't yeah. just shifty as well, it was pressure. You know, there were pressure lines. It they, was both. They seemed to yeah. read very well. It's like a game of poker and they yeah. can play a really, really skilled skill set there. And here instead they're sort of running a, uh, I don't know, running a car race where if you, if you start badly and you're behind everyone, you're all going the same speed, then you can't really make any gains. Yeah. Um, but that's not totally the case because Prevetsa has made the gains. It's just that Platoon hasn't sailed their, the right way around here. Brennanasek, on the other hand, just in front of us, they've really sailed a beautiful race. They're going to have to make one more job. I think we've got, yeah, to our bottom left is the finish line. And they are maybe going for it right now, actually, as we speak. They're rolling into that.
final chime. But they just have such a solid lead here. It's impressive. Well, it sounds like yesterday in the in the one race of the day, Quantum Racing had this solid a lead, and it all fell apart in the final downwind. So it is never over out here. It's definitely never over. It might look like it is for Banana Sec, but they are not giving up on board that boat yet, for sure. No. Certainly for sure, uh, Vladimir Lebomarov, the uh, owner-driver, looking focused but very calm. Behind them, Quantum Racing just rolling back into a drive as well. I think maybe Quantum a little bit concerned about the boat just on their hip, giving them bad air. And unfortunately, I can't actually see who that is. Maybe it's Ron Racing. It's a dark-colored hull. I think it is Ron Racing. Ran in fourth just now ahead of Azura. Prevetsa in uh, sixth. Right, so good downwind for Ron. Then if they've caught back up to, to fourth, they were behind Azura, then they gained on them on the downwind. If they can keep the gain and yeah. finish fourth, that's a better finish, a better score line than they've had so far. But it's just, Quantum, I think... It's just yo-yoing back and forwards between Azura and Ran and Prevetsa, just uh, between fourth and sixth. It's a really tough one, too, because it is so light. You don't want to be doing too many jives, but I think there are just enough little tiny pressure lines on this downwind to make a big difference that you actually do want to make sure you're in that sort of two knots extra puff because it's just at that five, six, seven, eight um, wind limit here where eight knots makes a huge difference to your boat speed if someone else is in five knots and you can really make a big gain um, versus the other boat. And yet if you're in someone's bad air, if they're in eight knots and you're sitting in their bad air, it feels like you're in five knots. I think that's what we saw earlier. The, the gains can happen really quickly and the losses can happen really quickly as well. So now seeing them spread out like this, I'm not surprised that Adrian Stead has decided to, to force Ron Racing out to a side, just get away from everyone else and try to hope that they can keep making the gains that they made early on in Azura to get back into, into this race, into fourth spot. Nenasek out here, still very, very healthy in the lead. Vladimir Labormov, Morgan Larson, and then, as we were speaking about, Francesco Bruni back on the boat. Now, you spoke to him yesterday, Andy. How excited is he to be sailing in the 52s again, and especially about next year? Yeah, I think he's very excited to be being back in the fleet, but also uh, sailing with uh, Alberto Barovi, a longtime friend from the uh, Prada days or Luna Rossa days, and uh, so he's happy to be back in that team, of a fairly Italian-centric as well as Russian team. But also uh, he was saying that he was very, uh, very pro-Azura, obviously used to race with Azura, very good friends with Vasco Vascotto, and he's hoping that Azura win the, uh, win the circuit. And to that end, Azura appeared to be up to third just now down this uh, last run, according to Virtual getting through uh, Gladiator and Ran Racing, but uh, we'll see how it plays out to the finish line. Just uh, out to the left, looking downwind, clear of the pack, and coming down in a nice, uh, what looks to be a, a bit of a header, just soaking down towards the fleet. Is that Ran Racing you're talking about, Andy? No, it's, it's uh, Azura. Azura, Azura. Say, Azura. Uh, okay. According to Virtual, are up to third just now, but some of that is because they've managed to get a bit of a header and soak down on the fleet, get down towards uh, Quantum, who were seeing the same shot just now. But with that header, then uh, it's going to be very hard to call the lay line into the finish line. Well, it's easy to call the ley line here for Bernana Sec. They have yeah, just sure. <laughs> jived. They're about four boat lengths off the finish line here. Final. Actually, you know what? It might not even be the final jive. I say it's easy, but I think they might have just jived about a boat length early there. They're, they're going to lay the pen, no problem. And I think the, the point is there's not really a lot of stress. The boat's behind them, a, a good enough distance behind them. They can just bear away here once they get near the line cross the finish line and yeah you can see the guys coming into the middle of the boat they're sort of all settling here there's not been any handshakes yet there's still a kite up that needs to come down but Bernanasek three two they're taking their second win out of four races an excellent 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 race a huge lead to the Russian team
So let's see how this uh, next two or three places play out. Quantum Racing, Lucas Sheward uh, of second just now. We've got Quantum just in front of us. And I think, as you say, assured of the second place behind is going to be the fun game. Who's coming in for, for third? And I think it is probably still anyone's game, although it might be Azura over Gladiator. Uh, but Ron Racing is in it as well. It's going to be it's going to be quite a tight fight. But Quantum Racing with two two race seconds out of two races for the day, an impressive scoreline for a team that was maybe disappointed by the first two races. Well, I think the first race they wouldn't have been that disappointed by to go from ninth to fourth. Anyone would be happy with that. I mean, that's doing all the battling that you can. But yesterday, to go from first to seventh just in one downwind, I know how disheartening that can be. And I think to, to battle back and bounce back the way that this team has done so well this morning, um, really, really well done to these guys. Second place, a nice jibe there, a solid ley line for this finish. Nothing early about it. In fact, they might be even a bit, a bit tight on this ley line. And you can see Terry just running down there to make sure that they're not going to hit the committee boat with their spinnaker. And yeah, here we go, about to bear away, crossing the finish line. The American team driven by Doug DeVos getting their second, second place for the fourth race of this regatta. And they will be quite content with that. Now behind them, it is a very tight fight, but the fight is being won by the Italians. Azura bow number two for having finished second overall in the series last year. They are not second for this year. They are winning the series if not this regatta, but I think crossing the line in third with platoon so far behind might put them back into the lead. Azura, a really nice race there, coming from seventh to finish in third. Well done to the Italians, and you can see there's some celebration on the back of the boat. There was a, there was a, a couple hand claps and some and I think some so for shakes. sure. I think it's as important for them to come back from, the, as you say, seventh, sixth or seventh at the top mark to get up to third is as important as winning races at this stage. Behind and them uh, crossing in fourth, uh, Gladiator there. So a very tight fight for Gladiator. I think, uh, if I'm wrong, I think I'm right. They got fourth in the last race as well. So a decent scoreline as well for, for Gladiator, Ed Baird's team, and owner Tony Langley will have you with that. Now crossing in fifth, Allegre. So a, an amazing comeback for Allegre, who were 11th in spinning circles at the first top mark. Um, a great comeback to sixth place, although an unfortunately unfortunate first race for them as they had some so breakdowns like causing them to miss six, the race. Is it? Platoon is one, two, three, four, five. Ah, sorry, yes, platoon into sixth. So, so yeah, Allegra moved all the way up to fifth. So a good, uh, good, uh, good recovery for Platoon actually getting up from eighth to sixth. I, yeah, and I think that, that what we're seeing here on the far side, Prevetza and just behind them, uh, Ron racing. Wow, uh, they, overstood the, they overstood the finish line there. So somewhere in there, we had enough of a right shift that the guys the guys from here actually were able to just pull off a, a well, Platoon was able to pull off a decent race, and it was really unfortunate for Prevetza and Ron racing. Ron, at times, was up into third and fourth on that downwind, so to go back all the way to seventh, that's a, that's a difficult one. Pop wreck there, great downwind, I think, coming from last up to ninth place overall, and Sled a disappointing going from eighth to tenth. Um, but yeah, a lot of moves on that downwind. When it gets really light, it gets really tricky, as we can see, and it allows a lot of opportunities there. And this will be Sorcha, I think their second. Well, they weren't 11th last race because that was technically Allegra, but I think their second crossing the line in, in last. So a, a, tough, a, a tough day so far for, for the, British, the second British team. We can make some guesses on the overalls here, Andy, but I think we might just let the maths play themselves out. And yeah, but uh, we could yeah, I mean, it, it should be fairly straightforward for the, uh, for the circuit just now. I think uh, Azura would move on to, well, they were on 182 before getting third, so they should go on to 185. Platoon on 184 before plus six takes them on to 190. Uh, and Quantum Racing 192 plus two should take them to 194. So uh, Azura then nine points uh, ahead of uh, quantum racing and five ahead of platoon. five ahead of platoon all right italians very happy probably with that seventh to third that is basically the five points that's four points at least so seventh to third place right there and whereas platoon probably quite upset with that sixth place um well you know they can't be that disappointed in that sixth place because they were even deeper at points in that race yeah but i mean the, the little uh, little differences making uh, big change or big place changes down that last run 
And really, as you said, it really wasn't over till it was over. Banana Sec and uh, Quantum Racing always looked fairly solid in the top two, top three. Banana Sec led from the top mark. Gladiator losing out to Azura ultimately. So that's our uh, provisional result. First Banana Sec, second Quantum, third Azura. Fourth Gladiator, fifth Allegra. Sixth Platoon, seventh Prevetsa. Eighth Ran Racing, ninth Paprek. 10th Sled and 11th Sorsha. So how's the breeze holding up? If you were the race officer, Maria, what would you be, uh, what would you be thinking just now, Jen? Would you be trying to roll straight into a third race or would you hold <laughs> fire much, and yeah. just see if it, uh, if it stays in? I think while we still have breeze, knowing what happened the last two days, it's, yeah. it's a go for it now while we've got it. I mean, it does look decent all the way up the course. It doesn't look yeah. like we are stressed about racing right now. But just knowing what we've seen the last two days and the fact that we lost it in the afternoon and they had to cancel racing the rest of the afternoon, I do think it is a, a good idea for them to get it off and, and, and make it happen for everyone. And granted, you know, for the sailors, it's probably the best thing as well. Sometimes you need that little 10-minute break to, to get your drink, get your food, reassess, debrief, but it's almost better just to get the day done quicker than to be out here for hours and hours. And so I think they'll be happy if she starts it off again soon. But it is that debrief period. It's just being able to put the result behind you, really uh, pinpoint what the, uh, the gains and the losses were, why they happened, then to move forward and to work on the positives. It's really, uh, we've seen so important to get off the start line. That was Platoon's Achilles heel that time in particular. And also Azura didn't, uh, Azura seemed to start well, but uh, really then didn't have the best first beat. We're, we're two of the same mind there, Andy. I was just going to say the two teams that probably really need the debrief right now are Azura and Platoon. I think Quantum Racing had a great race. I mean, yeah. they, they didn't win the start, but they had an excellent race. So for them, it's sort of more of the same. You know, we were talking about what would Tommy Burnham be telling their team, and I think he's probably saying that, yeah, just keep making the same decisions. He'd keep feeding them information, but he wouldn't really be changing anything because they are doing things well. But I think for sure for Platoon there, you've got to make some hard assessments. You've won the first race, you've gotten sixth in the second race, you know, you've got to, you've got to figure out whether risk is worth it again and you go for the first again or, or the mid, yeah, the middle doesn't seem to work, but it likes, they like to do it. So they yeah. have to have that debrief and think it through. And then I think for Azura, I mean, I still think they need to be hard on themselves in the debrief. Yeah, they got back to third, Absolutely. but it was, it no. was very, very lucky to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly what I'm thinking. You know, they need to pause and just say, right, what did we not do right in the first part of the race that we can do better? We need to get off the start line. We need to focus on uh, finding the best spot in the line, not necessarily fighting for the, uh, the key position. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, Jen, I think we're going to have a quick look at the leaderboard. Then we'll leave you and we'll come back for the next race. Just get a little bit of a pause ourselves. So Azura then leading the uh, regatta on a one, one point ahead of Platoon. Quantum Racing uh, third, so 14 points to Azura, 15 to Platoon, uh, 15 also to Quantum Racing, Brunanasek uh, 16, Gladiator 16, so very, very close between first and fifth place. So that's, uh, that's race number uh, four done. We're going to go through this uh, three race day. We're going to have a very quick break. Join us uh, very soon. We'll go straight into the third race of the day. Breeze seems to be holding up quite nicely. We've had two good races. Uh, join us again in a few minutes uh, for race number three of the day.
Well, they say that a picture tells a thousand words, and uh, there is our uh, picture, AP over A. We were expecting to go straight into uh, the third race of the day. The breeze seemed to be in quite nicely, but uh, Maria Torrijo, our race officer, has made the decision that the breeze is too light and too unstable, and so uh, AP over A, the fleet is coming back ashore. Jenny, was that uh, what you expected? Sorry, ask that again, Andy. I'm just asking whether that was what you expected. You spoke with Maria. It's just, uh, it's too light. Not, not what we were expecting at all. She's actually said it's too shifty, really. Yeah. She said it's gotten a lot lighter and quite shifty. So we did notice from that final downwind a lot of position changes throughout the fleet. I think she's just so aware the last two afternoons it's gotten really light to about 60, 70 degree wind shift. So I think the sailors don't enjoy racing in that. The race committee doesn't think it's fair racing in that. So it was, it was a solid call to just say that's it for the day. I'm not going to make you sit out here and wait for it to be steady conditions. It won't get any steadier than this. But at least today, two races, two excellent races, and of course, a new team to the leaderboard for winning a race, Platoon, and then Brennanisek getting their second race win, so a good day. And a good day, but of course, absolutely, the fundamental is to have fair races, equable races, uh, and uh, it's all great fun to have uh, places changing all the time, but it has to be fair, it has to be equitable, it has to be predictable, and uh, so a good call, I think, ultimately from uh, Maria Terrio. She's under pressure to get races in, but they have to be fair. So thank you, Jenny. Let's have a very quick look at the, uh, the leaderboard for the, uh, the season then. Azura then on uh, 185 points, Platoon on 190, and Quantum Racing on 194. So uh, Azura still have that, uh, have that lead, that uh, comeback for them in that last race, uh, as important as anything. Platoon, uh, a, a deeper score that time round. They'll be back out fighting tomorrow and Quantum Racing, two second places. Well, really uh, at a high, consistent mode then through the day. And I'm sure Terry Hutchison and the boys on Quantum Racing will be quite, uh, quite content with their day's work, particularly after the first two days. Prevetsa there in fourth, uh, Brunanasek fifth, uh, Ran Racing sixth, Sled, Gladiator, Allegra and Sorsha. So that's, uh, that's uh, the top of the table after uh, two races today. So getting ever closer, ever more exciting. Not sure that my nerves can take it through the next couple of days. But do stay with us. Uh, through. We've got live uh, action through the last two days, Friday and Super Saturday. Who's going to win the 52 Super Series 2017? It's too hard to call, but stay with us. Come back and join us tomorrow.